10. Lady Babushka. So this was a lady that was present during JFK's assassination. She was shown in pictures standing in the crowd and supposedly she took a picture of the event. Now when the FBI and police went to look for her for evidence, she was nowhere to be found. They were looking for a photo. She was, they were looking for anything that was related to the assassination and nothing was found. And it's been a topic of many conspiracy theories, including that she could have been involved in the assassination. But whether this is true, we may never find out because she has never been found. And it's been nearly 50 years, so who knows, maybe she's dead. 9. Cicada 3301. Now this story involves some puzzles that have been released for the past couple of years online. Uh, they're hosted by a group called the 3301 and basically these puzzles are very complex containing secret messages, numbers, and symbols and they're really hard to decipher. Now what makes this all so covert is that the purpose of the puzzles are unknown. No one really knows who's behind them and who they are and what they're trying to do. What's also interesting about this is that the group that's behind the puzzle is leaving clues in different areas of the world like Hawaii and Sweden. So it just makes it a very, very interesting yet secret, mysterious subject. And uh, there's also been a lot of conspiracy theories behind this, including that the puzzles are a recruitment tool for organizations like the NSA and CIA. And they're basically searching for the brightest people on the internet to come join uh, those organizations. So Cicada 3301, a very secret group uh, that have been releasing these puzzles, and we really don't know much about them. Eight. The Wow Signal. In the summer of 1977, a man by the name of Jerry Amen was scanning radio waves from space when he came across a strange signal. Uh, the wave saw a crazy spike and the signal lasted approximately 72 seconds. And after further evaluation, it appeared that the signal came from a star located 120 light years away, a place where no humans have ever been to or even seen. To produce that signal, it would have required a 2.2 gigawatt transmitter, more powerful than anything on Earth. And so to this day, it remains a mystery to how the signal was even created. The only plausible explanation is aliens. And several attempts have been made to even locate the signal, but nothing's been found. 7. Bimini Road. So Bimini Road is an underground rock formation located near the Bahamas and the Bimini Islands. The formation stretches about half a mile and is composed mostly of limestone blocks. And the story behind this is that in the early 20th century, a prophet by the name of Edgar Cay formulated a prediction that parts of Atlantis would be discovered around these islands. A few decades later and his prediction turned out to be pretty accurate. But the real mystery here is, uh, is this really part of Atlantis and uh, how was the prophet able to predict this? 70 years later and we still don't really have an explanation. 6. The Dancing Plague So in 1518, this woman created this crazy trend where she would go outside of her house in the town and start dancing. This wasn't your regular form of dancing though, this was an unusual type of movement that she performed and many other people followed her. Uh, at one point it was believed that 400 people were dancing with her. But the story takes a sharp turn because many of those people later suffered from heart attacks and strokes and there's really no reason why this happened. Many people have said that it's because the people were physically unfit, but there's still no explanation today why these two events were linked. 5. The Green Children of Wilpit So this story concerns two children that came across this village in England called Wilpit. Uh, their skin was green and they spoke in this unusual language and they only consumed the beans. Over time though, they did lose their green skin and they did eat other food. When they were baptized, the boy grew very sick and died. And on the other hand, the girl learned to speak English. She was able to tell the people that she and her brother came from this land called the Land of St. Martin, which didn't even exist where everybody was the color green. There really isn't any knowledge to whether these children were actually telling the truth or they're just botching some made up fairy tale, but it is interesting to think about whether this place does exist and whether there are more green people. 4. The Zodiac Letters So these were a series of letters that were sent by a serial killer to the police as a way to taunt them. Uh, the letters contained puzzles with encrypted text, and to this day only one of these letters have been solved, but the identity of the man is still unknown. It's not known how the serial killer got away with sending these letters never being traced, and today it remains a mystery as it's one of the biggest unsolved serial killer cases. 3. The Hairy Hands 
During the 1920s, a stretch of road existed in the UK where it saw a high number of accidents. Every one of these accidents were fatal and strikingly similar, and there really was no answer to how these accidents even occurred and why no one survived. Until one day, where a man managed to survive after being unconscious for days. He explained to everyone that as he approached the road, a hairy hand would grab the steering wheel, taking it out of his control. Now this seems like something that any person would say after being unconscious for days, but it gets interesting because another person managed to survive, and he also described a hairy hand grabbing the steering wheel. He even mentioned that the hands would come through the windows. There's no telling whether this is true, but it is kind of strange when two men gave the exact same stories. 2. The Pollock Twins So this is a story about 11 and 16 year old sisters who tragically died in a car accident. The following year, the mother actually gave birth to twins, and where the story gets strange is that one of the twins had a birthmark in the same exact location as her deceased sister. What's also interesting is that the twins began requesting the same thing, same toys, as their deceased sisters. The only problem is that they had no prior knowledge of their deceased sisters. When taken to a well-known psychologist, he deeply studied the case and concluded that it was indeed a reincarnation. 1. The Foot Mystery of Salish Sea So, since 2007, on the coast of Salish Sea in British American Washington, there's been a lot of detached feet showing up. So far, there's really no answers to how this might have occurred, uh, since they can't really find the other body parts linked to these feet. There have been a number of theories, including a Dexter-like serial killer being involved, and that the feet actually belong to people who were involved in boating accidents and plane crashes. But even that is very rare because the foot just doesn't come apart from the rest of the body. But what's also strange about this though is that all of the feet that have been showing up have been wearing tennis shoes. So are they all linked or are these all separate cases? We don't know. Number 10. We're starting with something that's been a hot topic recently in the media since 2010 or so, and that's the phenomenon called sky trumpets. Now the name sky trumpets doesn't exactly make you think of something scary when you hear it said, but trust me, if you watch the videos where people hear these noises, you'll think again. They don't really sound like trumpets at all, more like deafening and unexplainable screeching, and they've been happening across the globe for years. These sounds just can't be fake, there's clearly something going on up in the sky. The name Sky Trumpets actually comes from part of the book of Revelations in the New Testament of the Bible, where it says that seven trumpets will sound from above and that means Judgment Day has arrived. Whether you believe this or not, and there's definitely been a lot more than seven trumpet noises, it's too spooky to ignore. Number 9. Our next video is an obscure one from last July, and it's your typical run-of-the-mill orbs in the sky kind of deal. Orbs in the sky is an interesting one because there's a whole host of different supernatural explanations for any kind of orb. The first one being that orbs are actually spirits and ghosts that can't manifest properly. The other kind of more likely explanation of these orbs here is a phenomenon known as Foo Fighters. And yeah, that is where the band got their name from. Foo Fighters are orbs that fly around the sky, first sighted and named during the Second World War when pilots would frequently see them and be outmaneuvered. They think that these orbs might be an alien spacecraft, or some sort of probe there to investigate Earth. Maybe that's what this unsuspecting onlooker captured on their camera on the 4th of July last year. Number 8. 
This one is really weird. I've never seen anything like it. It's a video of some strange shapes called by the author of the video, Spiral Rods, flying through the sky. They first show the video at ordinary speed and we see these bright flashes go by impossibly quick. They even kind of look like some sort of camera glitch, but they also move in the same sort of way that a worm or an eel might. I have no idea what these could be. A creature maybe? Though it doesn't really make sense how it would be flying around like that without any wings. Interestingly though, when they're flying around, they are in the foreground of the image, so they can't be giant. According to cryptozoologists, these flying rods are also called skyfish and are extra dimensional creatures that come here from a different universe. Number 7. Moving on from strange rod creatures in the sky, we have a vortex in the sky. This is majorly creepy to look at, because it genuinely looks like a wormhole or some sort of portal out into the stars. There is no explanation for it, so who knows, maybe it was. There were a bunch of stories thought up to explain these vortexes seen over Scandinavia, with the Russians eventually taking the blame and saying it was a new missile of theirs they were testing, though this came only 24 hours after they had denied anything to do with it. It also came around the same time that the Large Hadron Collider was used in Switzerland. Though anything to do with that seems unlikely as well since Switzerland and Norway are pretty far apart. Also according to video analysis, the spiraling vortex was 150 miles wide. Gigantic spiraling vortexes appear in the skies of Norway and Sweden. In the early hours of December 9th, 2009, Thousands of people in northern Norway and Sweden were roused from their beds by concerned family and friends to witness an incredible celestial event. Some were just curious about the unusual light display. Others were frightened for their lives when they saw the massive white spiral with the blue tail, growing at immense speed. Number 6. Here's a news report from the UK about something that happened thousands of miles away, in the city of Kitwe in Zambia. This is less aliens and wormholes and more Harry Potter. Yep, it's so Harry Potter, in fact, that an old trailer for the sixth movie Half-Blood Prince is included at the top of the article before you even get to any pictures of the event itself. This only happened two months ago and it looks like a giant, dark, humanoid cloud floating through the sky. Now, I presume that it is just a weird cloud, but no meteorologists have appeared with an explanation of it. So the only explanation right now is that it's a Dementor in real life. Now, it almost definitely is not a Dementor in real life, but it's still definitely freaky, even if it does just turn out to be a cloud and not something magical. Number 5. Another one along similar lines to the earlier vortex in Norway is this sighting of a strange bright shape in the sky, but this time it's over Los Angeles. There's even less of an explanation for this one than for some of the other ones. It's really just a clip from a compilation, so feel free to guess at what you think it could be. Maybe it's a shooting star filmed incredibly close to a planet's surface, or a comet, and whoever filmed it just didn't know there was meant to be a comet passing by. Or alternatively, it's a giant alien spaceship flying overhead, which would be pretty cool at least, and in a way makes more sense than any theory about a comet or shooting star because of the highly unusual and bloated shape of its tail. Kinda of funny that it's flying over an airport though, maybe the aliens are looking for a good spot to land. What the f*** is that? That's the, that's the... Uh... That's crazy, bro. Number 4. This one is odd. At first glance, it looks just like some lights in the sky caught conveniently on CCTV. But I begin to wonder when I see the incredibly weird angle the camera is at, if it is CCTV. They can't really see anything aside from the giant statue, and even in the picture quality it's pretty distorted. So if it's not CCTV, and is, in fact, another camera left there and specially positioned, it does cast doubt on the legitimacy of this video. Moving on though, what we actually see is a row of half a dozen orbs, five of them in a neatish line and then another one way off to the right of the screen that disappears first. They come overhead and then dive downwards, past the statue and disappear off over the roof of the building. What these are, I don't know, 
but to hazard a guess, I'd say that they're more Foo Fighters. Number three. Chicken Little is an old fable that's appeared in print and pop culture often since it was collected by the Brothers Grimm in the 19th century. A story featuring a chicken who becomes convinced that the sky is falling down. This next clip on our list might be showing us that Chicken Little isn't as crazy as often portrayed, because we see a bunch of strange material falling out of the sky. The guy filming says it looks like snow, and if it wasn't for the fact he's out in California in the middle of summer with the clear blue skies above, I'd have to agree. He also calls it garbage and paper, and speculates that maybe the mysterious stuff has fallen off an airplane, though we can't see any of those either. Who knows, maybe this guy really is falling down. I don't know if you can tell, but see all these little white dots? These are garbage falling from this guy. I'm guessing from a plane or something. Look like snow. Number two, chemtrails are a favorite topic of many conspiracy theorists around the world. Speculation about them ranging from just being herbicides to being some sort of chemical use to brainwash people. And it really wouldn't be a complete list of mysteries in the sky without including them. This video starts with two people looking at the clouds, which they think are chemtrails, and moving on to document sticky string rain. This string rain is some pretty weird looking stuff, kind of like a spider web or silly string from a kid's birthday party. The girl gets some on her hand and it gets stuck, and then when she tears it apart, she says it feels foamy. Who knows what this stuff is? Maybe there are giant sky spiders waiting to jump down and wipe us all out. Alright, we just happen to be in the parking lot here, and we see some all clumped up by the tree. Yeah, I don't know if I should touch it. I can't get it off. Alright, what does it feel like? Do you hear that? No. It splits almost like, um, it feels like foamy, like silly string kind of, but not really. It's like, it's super sticky. Number one. Up until now, all the videos on our list have been from recent years, none from the last century at all. But the camera was invented in 1816, so as you'd expect, there are strange sightings in the sky going back decades like this one from 1952. When people think UFOs in America, people think of the Roswell crash, when actually Roswell is the most debunked UFO event in history. Five years after it, in the middle of what the press has called the UFO flap, there was a much more frightening sighting that people seem to forget about, when mysterious lights and shapes were filmed in the sky flying right over the Capitol building in the middle of Washington, D.C. To this day, the military have no concrete explanation of what happened, going as far to declare the whole thing as just a mirage which hundreds of eyewitness accounts from the ground and from airplanes above all testify to the opposite. Well, yes, we discussed it in every conference that we've had with the military. There's always things like that going on. Uh, flying saucers and they've had other things, you know, if I'm not mistaken. Number 10. Chillingham Castle is, like the name would suggest, a pretty chilling place to go, because it's incredibly haunted. It's in the UK, right up near the England-Scotland border, and is so old that no one actually knows when it was built. But the first major record of its use was when King Edward I of England stayed there in 1298 on his way to battle William Wallace, a Scottish rebel leading a war against the English, at the Battle of Falkirk. There have been hardly any changes to the building too and has been the center of dozens of battles between England and Scotland. And it was even under siege during the reign of Henry VIII. You know, the king with all the wives. The most famous ghost in the castle is the ghost of a young boy, nicknamed the Radiant Boy. Little was known about the origins of this ghost, who would cry out at midnight every night, until behind one of the walls the bones of a child was discovered. 
20 miles from the Scottish border. Far enough in to not be a soft touch. Big castle, strong castle. People left chilling. Nothing can protect them from what awaits in some rooms at Chillingham. Number nine. The Le Pavilion Hotel in New Orleans, Louisiana is widely known as one of the most haunted hotels in the entire city, which isn't surprising considering New Orleans is one of the oldest cities in the United States. And the hotel is built on the land originally given to Jesuits by the founders of the French colony. More than 200 years ago, this patch of land was known as the bad part of town, grim and full of death. And at one point, a theater in the land burned down in a very mysterious fire. The hotel was originally built in 1889 as the new Hotel de Nichaud, and was renamed to the current Le Pavillon in 1970, when the building changed ownership. Apparently, the hotel is full of ghosts who died on the land and who were once guests of the hotel themselves, including one incident where a man awoke with a female ghost stroking his hair and saying he belonged to her. So guys, if you guys see anything paranormal, crazy in this video right here, this whole video, let me know, please. Number eight, going from New Orleans to New Mexico, and it's time for a very haunted hotel you can find in Santa Fe. It's the La Fonda Hotel, and you may have heard of it, built officially in 1922 on the remains of other inns and rest houses. For America, Santa Fe is another old place, founded as long ago as 1607. And the inn on this plot of land was one of the first established buildings there. It has a bloody history though, when in 1857, someone was lynched in the backyard and somebody else was shot to death in the lobby in 1867. And a salesman 100 years ago committed suicide by jumping into the well out back. And it's this ghost of a salesman who's the most frequently seen ghost because the dining room is built right where the old well used to be. Number seven. In Alberta, Canada, you can find one of the Great White North's most prestigious luxury hotels, and also one of the most famous. It's called the Banff Springs Hotel, but has been nicknamed the Castle of the Rockies because of its very distinctive appearance. It's pretty hard to miss. It's also had some of the most famous guests in the world, including Helen Keller, Marilyn Monroe, and even Queen Elizabeth II. Despite its ghostly reputation, the hotel itself consistently denies that there are any spirits on the premises. But that doesn't stop the stories. Two such stories are that at room 873, in which a father murdered his wife and daughter and then killed himself. And after the hauntings began, the room was sealed off by the management. And the most famous story of the ghost bride whose dress was set on fire accidentally when she was climbing a staircase, and she fell and broke her neck and died. There was a, a bride, I believe in 1932, who was coming down these stairs to meet her, her groom at the bottom of the stairs. And as he was waiting, she took a few steps, tripped on her train or something went wrong, and she fell all the way down here and actually died on the stairs. Number six. Room 19 in the Talbot Hotel found in Storbridge, Northamptonshire, is celebrated as the most haunted hotel room in England. It's also known as the Mary Queen of Scots room because Mary Queen of Scots stayed there at one point. She was the last true monarch of Scotland while Elizabeth I was Queen of England. And after being locked up for 18 years by Elizabeth, she was found guilty of plotting to kill her and beheaded. Before that, she was forced to abdicate and her son James VI became King of Scotland. But when Elizabeth produced no heirs, because Mary and Elizabeth were cousins, James VI was left heir to the throne of England. And it was under him that England and Scotland unified, making him James VI of Scotland and James I of England. It's said that Mary still haunts the Talbot Hotel and a bunch of other places she was kept locked up. Number five. Now I already mentioned how Marilyn Monroe herself once stayed at the Banff Springs Hotel, but her actual ghost is said to endlessly roam the halls of Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, which you'll find right on Hollywood Boulevard in LA. It's still a luxury hotel now, but during its heyday, it was frequented by all kinds of movie stars, which also included Clark Gable, the so-called King of Hollywood and silent movie star Charlie Chaplin. It was even built by the movie stars Douglas Fairbanks and Mary Pickford, so it's really a place by the elite for the elite. 
People say that Monroe visits the hotel because it's one of the few places she was happy in her life. And she's looking to recapture this and find some peace after her suicide in 1962. You have this over here. We don't know where they go. And there's a lock on it right there, but the lock is broken. So it doesn't actually, like it's not actually locked. So then he opened it and he closed it because it was dark and it made her dark. We heard like a, like a voice. Number four. A lot of ghost hunters and parapsychologists will tell you that the presence of spirits is exacerbated by water, like water carries the spiritual energies of ghosts. It's no wonder that the RMS Queen Mary, which is currently permanently docked at Long Beach, California, is said to be incredibly haunted, not to mention its history as a troop ship during the Second World War. She's seen her fair share of battles after being transformed from a luxury liner when the war started, and then there are at least 49 reported deaths associated with the ship including a very grim one where a huge steel door crushed two men to death in different incidents. Perhaps the spookiest story is that of a young girl called Jackie who drowned in one of the pools. Again, that thing about water and spirits, who is still seen and heard throughout the ship. Look, I can, I'm, I'm like moving like the waves, like, look. Look, Mom, can you hear seeing legs? Look, 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 back and forth, see? <gasps> Number 3 It wouldn't really be a list of haunted hotels if we didn't feature somewhere in Salem, Massachusetts, the town so infamous for witch trials in 1692, one of the largest documented cases of mass hysteria to date. While I'm not going to tell you anything crazy like the hotels built with the gallows they hanged all the accused from once was, there are still some interesting ghost stories floating around. And of course you can still go see those gallows because they're kept as a memorial. One victim of the witch trials is associated with a hotel, called the Hawthorne Hotel though. That being Bridget Bishop, because she used to own an orchard where the property is built. Guests still claim that they can smell fresh apples in the room. One of the things is, is that um, they said that objects will uh, disappear and then reappear, and particularly keys. So I got an extra set of keys. So I'm going to keep it right over here. Number two. We already had the most haunted hotel room in England, but getting more specific now, the most haunted hotel room in London. It's room 333 in the Langham Hotel. And am I the only one who thinks it's a pretty creepy coincidence that 333 is half of 666? Uh, probably. Anyway, this place is incredibly haunted, and it was built to look like an Italian palace in 1865. Of course, room 333 isn't the only haunted part of the hotel, it's just the ghost's favorite for some reason. Ghosts like that of a Victorian doctor who murdered his wife and committed suicide while they were honeymooning have been seen there. A German prince who committed suicide has also been seen in that room. And one ghost who really likes shaking the beds, especially the one in room 333. Gonna crack on into the early hours and see what we find. I'm in room 333 in the Langham Hotel, I'm on my own. Are there any spirits with me right now? Can you make a noise? Can you show yourself? Can you do anything? Napoleon III, are you with me right now? Or the ghostly butler? Number one. Number one on our list has to be the Murder Castle. Okay, it's not actually called the Murder Castle. That's just a fun, cute nickname people give it. It was originally called the World's Fair Hotel and was built by the man called H.H. H. Holmes in Chicago. A con man and a mass murderer who once had a habit of stealing and mutilating corpses and then pretending they were accident victims to get insurance money. People think Holmes and his hotel may have been responsible for as many as 200 individual murders. And it was literally a maze out of a nightmare. Doors locked themselves behind people, there were dead end corridors, and stairways to nowhere. When his victims were killed, they were dropped down chutes into the basement where he dissected them and sold their organs to various medical contacts. And he even had furnaces and acid baths installing down to their disposed of remains. To top it all off, the original caretaker of the hotel committed suicide after Holmes' arrest leaving only the words, I couldn't sleep, in his note. This is the only hotel on this list you can't visit anymore, because in 1895, it was burned down by a mysterious fire, and the arsonists were never caught. Holmes is often called America's first serial killer. Also, this sounds a lot like American Horror Story. Mr. Herman Mudgett, better known under the murderous alias Dr. Henry H. Holmes. In his early teens, he began to be f fascinated with death, a fascination that would really never go away. He soon left school to perform a couple of jobs, and he also promptly married and had a son by age 20. 
I think his lineage still survives today, though I think they're free of any psycho- Ten. Seven. Two.
Dolls can mean a lot to many boys and girls. They can become friends and companions. But there are tales of dolls that have taken on a life of their own. These once innocent toys are now believed to be possessed with spirits or demonic spirits. These are the top five harrowing stories of haunted dolls. Number five, the voodoo zombie doll. Resembling something from the darkest corner of your nightmares, this voodoo zombie doll originated in New Orleans and was sold through eBay to a woman in Texas. The eBay listing gave specific rules to abide by while owning the doll. These rules included not removing it from its silver casing, a rule that the woman broke as soon as the doll arrived. She would come to regret that decision. The woman claims that the doll haunted her dreams and would violently attack her. She relisted it on eBay several times and succeeded in selling it, only to have the new buyer receive an empty box while the doll kept reappearing at the original owner's doorstep. The haunted doll is now in the possession of a haunted collector who hopes to figure out its mystery. Number 4. Joliet What would you do if your family's legacy was a haunted doll? This is the case for a woman named Anna, who is the current mother to a baby doll named Joliet. For four generations, the women in Anna's family have been cursed to keep up a cruel tradition. Each daughter gives birth to two children, a boy and a girl. In each case, the son mysteriously dies on its third day of life. Anna has been told Joliet was given to her then-pregnant great-grandmother by a vengeful friend. Soon afterwards, her great-grandmother gave birth to a boy, only to have it die on day three. Unexplained giggles, footsteps and inhumane screams are heard in the middle of the night coming from the doll. The family claims the cries of different infants can be heard, making the doll appear to be a vessel for all the baby boys lost over the years. Number three. Elmo. Since 1996, the famous Elmo dolls have topped the holiday toy list of children worldwide. There's nothing to be afraid of when it comes to children's toys, until they threaten to murder you. This was the case for the Bowman family. Back in 2008, two-year-old James Bowman had an Elmo Knows Your Name doll. The doll was programmed to recite its owner's name, along with various other personalised phrases. This particular doll, however, not only knew James's name, but would include the word kill before it. Many times, this Elmo doll would sing, Kill James, repeatedly, until James's horrified mother, Melissa, decided to put the doll out of sight and away from the toddler. The doll then began spewing death threats after its batteries had been removed. Fisher Price, the manufacturer, offered the Bowmans a voucher for a replacement. Number two, Robert. Robert was given to an artist, Robert Eugene Otto, in 1906 by an unhappy servant who practiced black magic. Throughout his childhood, Otto's parents would pick up on him playing with and conversing with the doll, assuming he was replying to himself in a disguised voice. Neighbours claimed to have seen the doll moving from window to window when the family was out. Sometimes the doll would emit a blood-curdling giggle and the Otto family caught glimpses of it running from room to room. In the night, Eugene would scream, and when his parents ran to the room, they would find furniture knocked over and Eugene in bed, looking incredibly scared, telling them that Robert did it. In addition, guests claimed to have seen Robert's expression change before their eyes, and he often blinked. When Eugene died in 1974, the doll was left in the attic until the house was bought again. The new family included a ten-year-old girl who became Robert's new owner. It was not long before the little girl began screaming out in the night, claiming that Robert moved about the room and even attempted to attack her on multiple occasions. More than 30 years later, she tells interviewers that the doll was alive and wanted to kill her. He is considered one of the most haunted objects in the world. Number 1. Annabelle Annabelle is considered to be one of the most haunted dolls to have existed. Annabelle currently lives in the Warren's Occult Museum, located in Connecticut. Her lock case is holy water encrusted. The Annabelle doll was given to a girl named Donna by her mother in 1970. Donna and her roommate, Angie, noticed that the doll would switch positions and move around the apartment when they weren't looking. They began finding messages on parchment paper that read, Help me, even though they did not keep parchment paper in the apartment. 
They brought in a medium who concluded that the doll was possessed by the ghost of a girl who was buried underneath the apartment. Lou, who was one of their friends, had some frightening experiences with the doll. He awoke one night from a bad dream, but something didn't seem right. It was as though he was awake but couldn't move. He looked around the room but couldn't discern anything out of the ordinary, and then it happened. Looking down towards his feet he saw the doll, Annabelle. It slowly began to glide up his leg, moved over his chest, and then stopped. Within seconds the doll was strangling him. Paralysed and gasping for breath, Lou blacked out. He awoke the next morning, certain that it wasn't a dream. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Those are my five favourite haunted doll stories. If anyone would like to share their own stories about haunted dolls, please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching. No one has ever been able to prove the existence of ghosts, yet they occupy a big part of our culture. There are many spooky stories of unexplained things happening that could back up their existence. These are the top 5 female ghosts that have been spotted. Number 5. The Bell Witch This tale has been recited for many years by the elders of the town of Adams. The story centres around John Bell Sr, a farmer living with his family in Adams in the 80s. It is told that the family were cursed in 1817 by a witch who was suspected to be a lady named Kate Baggs. The ghost sightings began when the family reported noises in the walls. The curse later grew, with family members being hit and pinched, objects flying and animals acting in unusual ways for no reason. No one was able to detect the witch, yet some people claim to have had conversations with her. Interestingly, it should be noted that only the family members were troubled by the witch, not any outsiders. Even today, people in the family report sightings of the ghost around the farmhouse. Number 4. Tony Jo Henry Annie Beatrice McQuinston, better known as Tony Jo Henry, was born in 1916. Her husband was serving a 50-year murder sentence in Huntsville Prison when Tony Jo and her accomplice Harold Archie Burks devised a plan to break her husband out of jail. To achieve the jailbreak, Tony Jo and Harold planned to rob a bank to secure the necessary money. They hitched a ride with her helpful stranger named Joseph P. Calloway, who was unaware of their plan. They robbed Calloway at gunpoint, tortured him and then made him undress and say his prayers as they shot him dead. Tony Jo was convicted of murder and sentenced to death. She appealed the penalty twice, but after her third trial she became the first and only woman in Louisiana to be executed by electric chair. Today she is believed to haunt the parish courthouse where she was imprisoned before death. Workers there have reported hearing her screams, feeling her presence and sometimes even the smell of her burning hair. Number 3 Ghosts of Four Par Restaurant. The present day's Four Par Restaurant in St. Paul was the home of Joseph Librant Four Par, a respectable businessman and dry goods merchant. It is supposed that he hired a maid named Molly in 1880 to take care of the mansion and soon began a love affair with her. The affair ended when Joseph's wife caught them making love. Soon, Molly discovered that she was pregnant and in the depression she hung herself from the third floor chandelier and died in the mansion. Joseph then left the house and flew to Europe with his family. Apparently he returned to the house later and killed himself with a gunshot on the ground floor. Now the restaurant is considered to be haunted by the ghosts of lovers. Many servers have claimed to see a pretty dark haired girl roaming the halls. She is also known to be seen at large parties held in the dining room. A photograph captured at a wedding party shows a ghostly hand near the bride, which is believed to be Joseph's hand. Number 2. Resurrection Mary Resurrection Mary is the best known ghost story in the Chicago area. The story says that Mary spent an evening dancing with her boyfriend at the O. Henry Ballroom. They got into an argument and Mary stormed out. She left the ballroom and started walking up Archer Avenue. 
She had not travelled a huge distance when she was struck by a hit and run driver who fled the scene, leaving Mary to die. They buried her in Resurrection Cemetery, wearing a beautiful white dancing dress and matching dancing shoes. On the road where Resurrection Cemetery is situated, a beautiful blonde haired, blue eyed young woman can sometimes be seen with her thumb in the air trying to hitch a ride. When a driver approaches her, she asks to be driven to the nearby graveyard. When they reach the cemetery, she vanishes. Number 1. Chloe of Myrtle's Plantation Myrtle's Plantation in Louisiana is considered to be one of the most haunted homes in America. Records count almost 12 ghosts that are permanent residents of the plantation. Of these ghosts, the most famous is Chloe. The story dates back to the 1800s, when the plantation was owned and managed by Judge Clark Woodruff, along with his wife, Sarah Matilda. Chloe was a slave of the Woodruffs at the time. Clark Woodruff was considered to be a womanizer, and Chloe became his mistress. However, Chloe was not satisfied with being the judge's mistress, but she disliked being a slave even more. She soon found that Clark was getting tired of her, and afraid of being sent back to the fields, she started eavesdropping on family conversations. On one such day, the judge caught her listening, and in his anger he cut off one of her ears. From then on, she wore a green turban to hide the wound. With the intention of revenge, she baked a birthday cake with some poison in it, and caused the death of Sarah and both of her daughters. Found guilty of murder, Chloe was hung from a tree and then thrown into the river by her fellow slaves. Now, she is usually found roaming within the plantation, wearing a green turban and searching for someone. In addition to this, there is a mirror in the hallway which sometimes shows tiny fingerprints and images of some small children. Perhaps this is the children that Chloe murdered. The topic of UFOs is a heated subject that has been debated for many years. Many people believe that our ancestors were witness to otherworldly crafts. UFO sightings date way back. There was even an unexplained dish-shaped craft seen in the Domenico painting of the Madonna back in the 15th century. Even today, thousands of UFO sightings are witnessed per month. Here are my 5 personal favourite UFO sightings from 2015 so far. This strange shaped UFO made news worldwide when it was spotted hovering next to one of Mexico's most active volcanoes. The UFO was captured on webcam sometime in January 2015. A local eyewitness stated that the object looked like it had two legs and was just hovering there. Then moments later it just disappeared. Mysterious crafts have been known to hover around and next to volcanoes. However, not everyone is in agreement. There have been some suggestions that it's simply a drone. This dish-shaped UFO was captured above Argentina on January the 25th, 2015. This UFO was spotted by a group of Argentinian workers. One of them stated that they were startled by the strange presence in the sky. Another worker stated that he quickly grabbed his phone to take a picture of the object. The witnesses claimed that the object was suspended in mid-air and made no sound. The interesting thing about this photo is that it's clear. People don't expect to see UFOs, so when the experience happens, it's all very rushed. So to get a good, clear picture of a UFO, it's pretty impressive. The photo does seem to show a saucer-shaped craft hovering motionless. Conspiracy theorists have linked UFOs and the pyramids together for many years now. The fact that ancient Egyptians built structures with near-perfect ratio proportions is simply incredible. So many people believe that they must have had some extra help. When a UFO is spotted above a pyramid-shaped structure, it cements this theory. This particular dish-shaped craft was snapped hovering above a Mexican pyramid on the 4th of May 2015. The witness stated that they didn't notice the craft when the photo was taken, but when they looked back at their photo, they spotted this saucer-shaped craft. The photo is clear, but the craft does look large, which begs the question, surely someone would have seen it. Perhaps the object was travelling at a too high speed for anyone to notice it. 
This UFO sighting made news headlines everywhere when a young Indian boy claimed to have captured a dish-shaped craft flying above Kapna, India. The boy stated that he was taking pictures of strange cloud formations and he then noticed the saucer-shaped craft. Personally, I'm not sure about this one. It looks as if the craft is taken from a Hollywood movie. It's almost too perfect. However, the boy has said he is willing to give up the photo for detailed photo analysis in order for it to be verified. When UFOs are witnessed on Earth, it causes many people to get excited and speculate over what they have just seen. However, many of these sightings can easily be debunked as bugs, aircrafts or weather phenomena. When a mysterious object is seen on another planet, it makes the sighting far more credible. This dish-shaped UFO was captured observing the Mars rover on January the 20th, 2015. The photo was taken by the rover itself and can be checked on the official NASA website. I'll post a link in the description box. We cannot pass this off as any old man-made aircraft because we haven't sent any such aerial craft to Mars. So that begs the question, who built this flying object? Who is controlling it? And who is the pilot? Is there a possibility that we are being watched? Every year there are thousands of sightings, and these were just a few of my personal favourites from 2015. If you have ever seen a UFO, please leave a comment below as I'm always looking to find out more about these mysterious objects. Thank you very much for watching. Though evil spirits and demons seem like the stuff of fiction, these extreme cases could make you believe otherwise. Many people throughout history have become victims to demonic possession, so let's explore the top 5 cases of demonic possession. Arnie Johnson The case of Arnie Johnson is the first known court case in the United States, during which the defense attempted to prove that the defendant was not guilty by reason of possession. In 1981, Arnie Johnson murdered his landlord, Alan Bono, in Connecticut. Johnson's attorney argued that his actions indicated a pattern of erratic behaviour that had begun when Johnson was just a child. Johnson's family even consulted with demonologists, Ed and Lorraine Warren. Therefore, the lawyers argued that the child had been tormented and harassed by unknown entities for most of his life. They asserted that his evil doings resulted not from a psychological disorder, but from a demonic possession. Ultimately, the judge ruled that demonic possession was not a valid defense against first degree murder. Johnson was convicted, but he only served a mere five years of his 10 to 20 year sentence. Julia. In 2008, Dr. Richard Gallagher, a board certified psychiatrist and professor at New York Medical College, documented the case of a patient named Julia whom he concluded was indeed possessed by demons. It is rare that a scientist would acknowledge the possibility of possession, typically doctors, as they think possession is either fraudulent or rather the result of a mental illness. Dr. Gallagher personally observed items flying around the room, Julia levitating off the bed, speaking in tongues, and knowing things about people around her that she could not possibly have known. Here is a statement Gallagher wrote. Julia would go into trances, of a recurring nature. Mentally troubled individuals often dissociate, but Julia's chances were accompanied by an unusual phenomenon. Out of her mouth would come various threats, taunts, and languages, phrases such as, leave her alone, you idiot, she's ours, leave you stupid priest. The tone of this voice was different from Julia's, and it varied, sometimes sounding dark and masculine, and at other points sounding very high-pitched, most of her comments during these trances displayed a marked contempt for anything religious or sacred. Clara Seal In 1906, Clara Seal was a Christian student at St. Michael's Mission in Natal, South Africa. For some reason, Clara prayed to and made a pact with Satan when she was 16 years old, and just days later was overtaken by strange impulses. She was repulsed by religious artifacts such as crucifixes. She could speak and understand several languages of which she had no previous knowledge, and she became clairvoyant regarding the thoughts and histories of people around her. 
nuns who attended to Clara reported that she produced horrible animalistic sounds. She also levitated up to five feet in the air. Eventually, two priests were brought in to perform an exorcism. Clara tried to strangle one of the priests with his stole, and over 170 people witnessed her levitating as the priests read scriptures. Over the course of two days, the rites of exorcism successfully drove the dark spirits from her body. Ronald Doe Known as the real story behind the novel and Hollywood movie The Exorcist, the tale of 14-year-old Ronald Doe is the most notorious stories of demonic possession. In fact, Ronald Doe is not his real name. It is assigned to him by the Catholic Church in order to preserve the boy's privacy. In the late 1940s, Doe's aunt encouraged him to use a Ouija board, and many speculate that after her death the boy attempted to contact his aunt with the Ouija board an act which opened the door for demons who wished to possess him. The possession started with strange sounds, like dripping water that no one could place. Eventually, religious artifacts began to quake and fly off the walls, and unexplained footsteps and scratching noises could be heard from around the house. Scratches began to appear on the boy's body, including words that seemed to have been carved into the boy's flesh by unseen claws. The boy spoke in a dark voice and levitated in the air, his family brought in a Catholic priest who determined that the boy was possessed by evil spirits and needed an exorcism. The exorcism was performed over 30 times, with the boy injuring the priest many times. When at last the rite was successful, the entire hospital heard those cries of anguish and reported a horrible sulfuric odor hanging in the air. Annalise Michel the story of Annalise Michel is a controversial one, and is the inspiration for many films. Most notable, the 2005 courtroom drama horror film, The Exorcism of Emily Rose. 16-year-old Annalise Michel had a history of epilepsy and mental illness, for which she had often been treated at a psychiatric hospital. However, in 1973, Annalise became suicidal, rejected all religious artifacts, drank her own urine, and began to hear voices. Medicine did nothing to help the girl. She begged her family to bring in a priest because she believed that she was possessed by demons. Though her request was rejected, two local priests secretly began treating her with exorcism rites. Meanwhile, her parents stopped treating her epilepsy and mental disorders. Annalise had almost 70 exorcisms performed on her over the course of 10 months. She refused to eat and often talked of dying. She was dead within a year. Annalise Michelle died from starvation. Consequently, her parents and the priests responsible were charged with neglect homicide. Whether you believe demonic possession is real or not, there's no doubting that these stories are creepy. If anyone knows any more information about this subject or explanations, please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching. There are many unexplained mysteries on this earth that people and scientists cannot explain. Whether you believe these stories or not, there is no solid explanation for them. So here are five unsolved stories from around the world. During the Cold War, Russia and the Allies weren't exactly best friends. For 50 years, both sides tried to hide their failures from each other, creating a climate where you couldn't be sure what was real and what was propaganda. So when a Czech agent leaked information about a failed Russian spaceflight in December 1959, no one knew what to make of it. According to the story, Yuri Gagarin's successful 1961 trip into orbit was only one in a long line of Soviet space attempts, and merely the first one that didn't end in the pilot's gruesome death. Worryingly, there may be some evidence to this. In February 1961, two months before Yuri's flight, a listening station in Italy apparently recorded two Russian voices broadcasting the words, Everything is satisfactory. We are orbiting the Earth. A few days later, they picked up another transmission that sounded like a scream of terror, followed by empty silence. Two later recordings were also made, 
including one of three sobbing people saying, Conditions are growing worse. Why don't you answer? We are going slower. The world will never know about us. So what were they? Were they clever fakes? Or evidence that Russia abandoned cosmonauts to a horrifying fate? We may never know this mystery. In 1950, a Victorian man appeared in Times Square. Witnesses said he looked startled, and then a minute later he was hit by a car and killed. The officials at the morgue searched his body and found these strange items in his pockets. A copper token for a beer worth five cents, about $70 in old banknotes, business cards with the name Rudolf Fence and an address on Fifth Avenue, a letter sent to this address in June 1876 from Philadelphia. None of these objects showed any signs of aging. Captain Herbert Rim of the Missing Persons Department of NYPD tried using this information to identify the man. He found that the address on Fifth Avenue was part of a business. Its current owner did not know Rudolf Fence. Fence's name was not listed in the address book. His fingerprints were not recorded anywhere, and no one had reported him missing. Herbert continued the investigation and finally found a Rudolf Fence Jr. in a telephone book of 1939. He spoke to the residents of the apartment building, who stated they remembered Fence and described him as a man about 60 years old, who had worked nearby. Contacting the bank, Herbert was told that Fence died five years before, but his widow was still alive but lived in Florida. He was able to contact her and learn that her husband's father had disappeared in 1876, aged 29. He left the house for an evening walk and never returned. This story was published a number of times in the 70s and 80s. Chris Orbeck investigated this story, and his research led to the conclusion that the people and events were fictional, although he could not find the original source. But there is a twist. In 2007, a researcher working for the then Berlin News Archive found a newspaper story in the archives from April 1951, reporting the story almost as it is reported today. This newspaper archive was printed five months before the short story sourced as the origin. What's even more strange, a number of researchers have claimed to have found evidence of the real Rudolf Fence and proof of his disappearance aged 29 in 1876. In June 1936, Max and his wife Emma were on a walk when they noticed a rock with wood sticking out from its core. They decided to take the oddity home and later cracked it open with a hammer and chisel. What they found inside seemed to be an ancient hammer of sorts. A team of archaeologists checked it out, and as it turns out, the rock encasing the hammer was dated back more than 400 million years, and the hammer itself turned out to be more than 500 million years old. A section of the handle had begun the transformation to coal. The hammer's head, made of more than 96% iron, is far more pure than anything nature could have achieved without an assist from modern technology. The hammer is now on show at the Creation Evidence Museum in Texas. For more than three decades, miners at the Wonderstone Silver Mine in South Africa have been extracting out of deep rocks several strange metallic spheroids. In 1979, several were closely examined by a professor of geology at the University of Johannesburg. The metallic spheroids look like flattened globes, averaging one to four inches in diameter, and their exteriors usually are colored steel blue with a reddish reflection and embedded in the metal are tiny flecks of white fibers. They are made of a nickel steel alloy, which does not occur naturally, and is of a composition that rules out meteoric origin. Some have only a thin shell, a quarter of an inch thick, and when broken open are found filled with a strange spongy material that disintegrates into dust once it contacts with the air. What makes this mystery remarkable is that the spheroids were mined out of a layer of rock dated to be at least 2.8 billion years old. Adding mystery to mystery, the curator of the South African Museum has discovered that the spheroids he has on exhibit slowly rotate on its axis by its own power, while locked in its display case and free of outside vibrations. The stones are very well balanced and have been taken to the California Space Institute at the University of California to have tests done to determine just how well balanced it is. It turned out that the balance is within one hundred thousandth of an inch from absolute perfection. One NASA scientist reportedly said that they do not have the technology to create anything as finely balanced as this. He said the only way that either nature or human technology could create something so finely balanced would be in a zero gravity environment.
there remains a case unsolved from the 1960s. It begins in Rio, Brazil. Two young men, Manuel de Cruz and Miguel Viana, both electrical technicians, were found lying dead together in the middle of a forest. Their corpses dressed in their smartest suits with lead masks covering their faces. The cause of death was undetermined. The case for suicide or murder is still out on these two. Cruz and Vienna set off on a trip to buy electronic work supplies and a new car. They were reported to have left with money for a car and stopped by at a general store to buy a bottle of water and a raincoat on the way. The man who served them told the police that the pair looked nervous and were in a hurry, checking their watches every minute or so. Their bodies were found three days later, but what's most puzzling is what they were found with at the scene. Police investigators found them in their suits and raincoats, wearing lead eye masks with no holes, the types to use against radiation, two towels and a notebook on the ground near the bodies. The money for the car was gone, as if the lead masks and suits weren't spooky enough. The instructions written in the notebook seemed to point to a very strange mystery. There in Portuguese were the words 1630, be at agreed place, 1830, swallow capsules, after effect, protect metals, wait for mask signal. Were Cruz and Vienna scheduled to meet with aliens? Or maybe even time travelers from another dimension? Reports couldn't even find out what the pills were, as their organs had rotted away. Perhaps this truly was a case of interdimensional travel that had gone. Look up at the stars and not down at your feet. Try to make sense of what you see and wonder about what makes the universe exist. Be curious. Stephen Hawking I'm Mike with List25 and here are 25 Strange Things About the Universe. Twenty-five. The Sun Boils with the right telescope, you can see the sun boiling. Just as warm water rises in a cook pot, cools and falls down the sides via the process of convection, the sun transfers energy to its surface via millions of cells called granules, which live for at most 20 minutes. 24. Gravitational Waves Albert Einstein reported on the existence of gravitational waves back in 1916, a century before their existence was confirmed. The science world was elated by their ultimate discovery in 2015, revealing that space-time could actually ripple, just as the still water on a pond ripples when a stone is tossed into it. 23. Interplanetary Transport Network Though it sounds like a science fiction writer's creation, the Interplanetary Transport Network is one of the coolest facts about the universe on our list. Originally named the Interplanetary Superhighway, the ITN is a set of pathways through our solar system based on the competing gravity of celestial bodies. Satellites and other spacecraft can use it to slowly move between objects while using very little energy. 22. Plasma Most of us were taught in science class that there are three types of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. But there's a fourth, plasma. Made by heating a gas or applying a strong electromagnetic field to it, Plasma is the most plentiful form of matter in the universe. It can be seen in neon signs, and in this picture as the space shuttle Atlantis re-enters the atmosphere in 2012. 21. Airglow A unique phenomenon that can only be seen from space, airglow is the release of energy by atoms and molecules high up in the atmosphere. Releasing their energy after a day of excitation by the sun, the molecules can produce visible light, such as the green given off by oxygen molecules. 20. Dark Matter One of the strange things which continues to baffle astronomers is dark matter, a maybe-it-exists-maybe-it-doesn't hypothetical substance that makes up over 80% of matter in the universe. Scientists are currently smashing particles together in the Large Hadron Collider to understand more about it. So far, the science world has broken dark matter up into different varieties, such as light dark matter, cold dark matter, and warm dark matter. 19. Light Speed Light travels almost 16 trillion miles, or about 5 trillion kilometers, in one year. To compare, the light from our sun reaches us in only 8.3 minutes. 
18. The sun self-regulates. The sun is actually a self-regulating entity. When too many hydrogen atoms are colliding and fusion is happening at too high a rate, the core heats up and slightly expands onto the outer layers. The extra space created decreases the density of atoms and thus the collision slash fusion rate. When this happens, the core cools and shrinks, carrying on its ever-present balancing act. 17. Infinitesimally small chances. The chance any hydrogen atom on the sun will collide with another hydrogen atom and produce nuclear fusion is estimated at only 1 in every 5 billion years. Thankfully, there are plenty of hydrogen atoms in the sun's core to test those odds, so we don't need to worry about the sun dimming out anytime soon. 16. The Snowman Craters Three side-by-side -side craters on the asteroid Vesta, the second most massive body in the asteroid belt, and one of the biggest contributors of meteorites which have landed on Earth, have been said to resemble a snowman on the rocky object. 15. Planetesimals, such as the objects making up the Oort cloud, are solid objects that are likely the debris of planet formation. Though their exteriors are bombarded with solar radiation, thus changing their chemistry and structure, their insides are believed to contain pure material that, if captured and studied, will give scientists clues to the universe at the time of our solar system's formation. 14. Origin of Comets Most of the comets entering the inner solar system likely come from the Oort Cloud, a collection of trillions of pieces of solid icy objects just outside our solar system. Comets are assumed to be dislodged by the gravitational interaction of the Milky Way and passing stars, throwing the icy objects towards the inner solar system. 13. The Golden Record Both the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 probes carry an audiovisual gold-plated record disc with them. Bearing photos of the Earth, its life forms, and even a greeting from the U.S. President and Secretary General of the U.N., the record was made in case any other intelligent life forms find the spacecrafts. 12. Sounds in Space did you know the universe makes noises? In September 2013, NASA released audio recordings of plasma waves, the first sounds ever recorded in interstellar space. 11. Cosmic Purgatory Astronomers have termed a new region of space discovered by the Voyager 1 probe as Cosmic Purgatory. Just outside of the solar system, this area sees the solar system's magnetic field doubled as it creates a barrier to interstellar space. Charged particles emitted from the sun also slow their course and turn back inward. 10. Voyager 2 Since the Earth revolves around the sun at a rate faster than NASA's Voyager 2 travels outward from the Earth, the distance between Earth and the probe decreases at certain times of the year, such as springtime. 9. Insufficient Solar Furnaces Despite being our primary source of energy, the sun is volume for volume speaking, grossly inefficient. To compare, an old light bulb gave off 100 watts of energy. The sun, only about 276.5 watts per cubic meter. That's about as much as the metabolism of a lizard. 8. Temperature of the sun. The hottest point on Earth was recorded in Iran's Lut Desert, reaching a staggering 160 degrees Fahrenheit or 71 degrees Celsius in 2015. Scientists haven't even found bacteria able to survive this in the desert. In contrast, the sun is 5,778 Kelvin, easier known as 9,941 degrees Fahrenheit or 5,505 degrees Celsius, and that's just the surface temperature. The core of the sun has a temperature averaging 15.7 million degrees Kelvin, or 28.3 million degrees Fahrenheit, or 15.69 million degrees Celsius. 7. Size of our Sun To give some meaningless comparisons between our Sun and the Earth, the Sun has 333,000 times more mass and is 1,300,000 times more voluminous than our planet. Despite these facts, its average density is only about 26% of the Earth's. 6. Time to reach our second nearest star. Though no mission has been planned to our second nearest star after the Sun, Proxima Centauri, if we were to send a spacecraft towards it, it would take about 74,000 Earth years to reach it. Sorry to all the futurists out there. 
It doesn't seem like this will happen in our lifetimes. 5. Distance traveled by our furthest space probe. The most distant space probe humanity has ever launched, Voyager 1, just left the bounds of the solar system in 2012. Despite having flown for nearly 40 years, the probe is only 18.53 light hours away from Earth as of April 2016. That's only 1 500th of a light year. To travel one light year, Voyager 1 would have to sail among the stars for almost 20,000 years. 4. Slow Moving Photons Though a light photon only takes 8.3 minutes to travel from the Sun to the Earth, it can take 100,000 years to move from the Sun's core to the surface. Why? Well, the Sun's core is incredibly dense, 150 times more dense than water. Therefore, the gamma rays released from fusion can only travel a few millimeters before being absorbed by another atom and re-radiated in a constant chain on their way out of the core. 3. Nearest Black Holes to Us There are at least 16 observed stellar mass black holes in the Milky Way, which are closer to us than the galaxy's center, Sagittarius A. The closest, V616 Monocerotus, is about 3,000 light years away. Though black holes are known for sucking in all nearby matter, we don't have to worry too much. Our closest star, the Sun, is about 0.0000158 light years away. So the gravitational pull from 3,000 light years away isn't something to be concerned about, for now. 2. Supermassive Black Holes The largest known type of black hole, a supermassive black hole, is so big it can have a mass many billions of times the mass of our Sun. Located at the center of nearly all massive galaxies, a supermassive black hole also exists in the center of our own Milky Way. It's called Sagittarius A and was discovered in 1974. 1. Extraterrestrial Life In April 2010, radio astronomers at the University of Manchester noticed an unknown object in the starburst galaxy Messier 82. The unknown object sent out radio waves which have never been observed in the known universe. Scientists still aren't sure what it could be, though I'm sure extraterrestrial theorists have their own opinions. Shadow people are said to be shadow-like creatures of supernatural origin, which appear as dark forms in people's visions. Reports of shadow people are similar to ghost sightings, but differ in that shadow people are not reported as having any human features. Most accounts of shadow people are described as black humanoid silhouettes with no mouths, noses, eyes, or any expressions whatsoever, though witnesses have described child-sized humanoids or shapeless masses. They're described as a black mass and their movement is often quick and disjointed. So here are five scary stories of people who have witnessed a shadow person. A few years ago, I went on a nighttime walk with a good friend for a cemetery. Its name was Sacred Blood Cemetery, as if it wasn't creepy enough already. After a while, we felt creeped out, but we didn't see anything so we decided to head out. We turned around and about 30 feet away appeared a black dark outline of something peering at us from behind a tree. Something felt sinister. My heart started pounding and the air seemed really thin. I tried to dismiss it at first as being part of the tree, but as we walked around the tree it seemed to move with us to remain hidden behind the tree. It was absolutely terrifying. About 10 years ago, me and my sister were home alone. I've never really believed in the paranormal, but I've always been open to possibilities. It was around 3am, my sister was downstairs watching the telly, and my room was upstairs and I had to go to the bathroom. Now, the bathroom faces the flight of stairs, and you could always see the glare from the light off the streets illuminating the living room and downstairs. But this one time, because I always looked downstairs while going to the loo, there was no glare. There was no glow from the telly my sister was watching. All I could see that one time was this blackness walking up the stairs or hovering. It was the first time I felt this terror within me. I froze. I froze there for a couple of seconds. I ran to my room, 
turned on the lights and sat on my bed trying to figure out what had just happened. I didn't know what it was or what it was called. It looked like a shadow. It was coming towards me and it scared me. This house is very creepy. I was a kid, maybe 10 years old. I'd just gone to bed and was wide awake. It takes me a long time to get to sleep with the window open in my room. I looked at the window and there was a shadow that looked like the outline of a man looking in. My room was on the second story of our house and we had peak roofs, so I'm 99% sure it wasn't just a person looking in. It was a shadow. I screamed and ran to my parents' room and told them that I'd just seen a shadow looking in the window. They went and looked and it was gone. It still haunts me to this day. I've always been open spiritually, especially as a kid, and have seen ghosts and spirits before, but it's nothing compared to this shadow person I saw when I was 13. For starters, I don't know what these things are. I've done lots of researching to try and make sense of these entities, but I honestly have no idea. They are not ghosts or spirits, as I've seen them before. What I saw was not something in the corner of my eye, or something that looked white and transparent, like I've seen previously with other entities. They are basically a black mass. This is what I saw. I was trying to sleep, tossing and turning, and I turned over on my opposite side to face my doorway, which was on the other side of my room. My door was wide open because I was frightened as a kid, especially of the night, as I always saw mysterious figures. This particular night, standing in my doorway was this black figure of a man standing six foot tall. The black figure of the man stood with his arms by his side, and you could not see through him. It looked three-dimensional. This figure didn't have a hat or red eyes like I've read of other people. It was just a silhouette of a man. I sat up as soon as I saw it, and I stared at it for a good five seconds. I wasn't scared for some reason, and I can't really explain why. I think it was just shock. I asked what's wrong, as I assumed it was my mother. When I got no reply, I assumed it was my brother, and asked the same question and still no reply. By that point, I'd realized what was happening and pulled the covers over my head. I looked up 10 seconds later and it was gone. I was about 10 years old at the time and had moved into a different state with my mum and her new husband. I was home alone on the computer and sitting in an open area. All the lights in the house were turned off. The only light I had on was the one coming from my computer screen and from the running TV. You know when you get that feeling, as if someone's watching you? I looked around to see if anything was in the room, and I just saw this dark human figure standing near the stairs. It was a black mass. The hairs on my neck stood up. It was just standing there, looking at me, with one hand on the banister. I grabbed my laptop and ran to my room, repeatedly calling my parents. Some people consider the Ouija board to be nothing more than a toy. However, the mystery and psychological power that the board can have over people is a serious concern. Some people claim that the board has the ability to accurately predict the future, or that it harbours terrible and evil forces. Others believe that it provides a channel through which the user can communicate with the spirits of the dead. Whatever you believe, these are five stories that haven't ended well for the users. Number 5. Coward Two friends decided to use a Ouija board. They planned to use the board to mess around with. At first, one of them was hesitant, but agreed to do it as long as she didn't have to participate. After she had the board set up, her friend asked, Is there anyone in here? There was no reply. So, being the foolish teenager that he was, he violently said, If anything is in here and not talking, you're a coward. The board was put away after that. A week later, he was sleeping upstairs on his couch. He woke up for no reason. He looked around to see what could have woken him up and couldn't see a thing, but felt as if he was being watched or like something was in the room. After attempting to get back to sleep, he suddenly heard from downstairs, get the boy, in a chilling voice. The hairs on his neck stood up and he started to shake. 
He opened his eyes and listened, but heard nothing. He once again attempted to go back to sleep, and then heard again, Get the boy! It was much louder this time. Then the downstairs door slammed shut, and he felt a burst of cold air. All he could think about was the Ouija board. Number 4. The Case of Nellie Heard in 1935, a man named Herbert B. Hurd shot his wife four times in the back. Arrested by police at the time of the incident, the 78-year-old husband described his stressful relationship with his wife following her consultations with a Ouija board. Mrs. Nellie Hurd claimed to receive messages from the Ouija board about her husband's infidelity. The board allegedly told her that her husband gave his mistress a great deal of money. After each consultation with the Ouija board, the wife would give her husband a dark look and announce that she'd caught him in yet another lie. Over the course of several weeks, the wife tied him to the bedpost with wire and whipped his body with knotted ropes. She used a burning poker to wound him and stabbed him in the shins with a knife. Finally, under the brunt of bodily torture, he confessed anything she wanted to hear just so that she would stop. Satisfied with his confession, she left a gun on the nightstand. Freed, yet still terrified, the husband seized the gun and shot her in the back before she could inflict any further harm. The courts ruled the murder a justifiable homicide, since the husband was reasonably in fear for his life. Number 3. You can't hide secrets from a Ouija board. One summer, three middle school boys discovered a Ouija board in a bin outside a local apartment building. Tom, the oldest, was terribly cruel and a bully to the younger boy, Josh. The third boy, Chris, would avoid the abuse by remaining silent. Secretly, Chris and Josh disliked Tom's behaviour, but they tolerated it because they had no other friends. That summer, the three boys took the discovered Ouija board to Tom's house, where he was alone most of the time anyway. His father was always working and his mum had passed away years before. As the three boys sat in the middle of the living room, with their hands on the planchette. They became bored after 20 minutes of waiting. When they were just about to give up, the planchette budged. Finally, it spelled out, Get away. Get away? I live here, Tom shouted. The planchette started moving more briskly in a figure of eight. Now. That's weird. I wonder what it means, Chris said, glancing at Tom and Josh. He looked back at the board. Where should we go? Chris asked. It hurts. This is stupid, Tom said. He looked at Josh and Chris. You guys are doing this. We'll test it. Josh, let go. Josh removed his hand from the planchette. Now ask it a question that only you will know, Tom ordered. Josh immediately asked, Who is the person that keeps hitting me? Tom gave Josh a nasty glare, but the planchette was already moving quickly. Ask Tom, it answered. This is stupid, Tom said. Dad, the board spelled. Huh? Chris said, staring at the board. I think that answer was for Tom. He glanced up at Josh, and they exchanged confused expressions. Dad, it spelled again. Tom's breathing started to accelerate. His face turned red and sweat formed on his brow. Dad, it spelled a third time. Tom jumped up and ran from the room crying. It was the first time Josh and Chris had ever seen or heard Tom cry. They only learned a few days later that Tom's father routinely abused him. Somehow, the Ouija board knew Tom's innermost secret. Number 2. Jake Cindy was only 13. She was the middle child within a large, devoutly Christian family. She had three older sisters, a younger sister and a younger brother. At some point during the 8th grade, a friend let her borrow a Ouija board one weekend and that weekend Cindy and her older sisters played with the board. They did it in secret, late at night, because they knew how strongly their parents would disapprove. That weekend, the mysterious talking board mesmerised Cindy. She became obsessed with it. She could think of nothing else and soon had a list of questions that she wanted to ask the board. Cindy had an hour every day after school where she was alone in the house, before her older sisters returned from high school. On Monday afternoon, right after getting home from school, she cautiously crept up to her room, set up the Ouija board on her bed, and gently laid her fingertips on top of the pointer. After just ten minutes of sitting quietly, the planchette started to jerk softly across the board. 
It spelled out hi. Cindy's breath caught in her throat. Hi? She quickly answered. Who are you? The planchette then spelled out Jake. A chilling sensation ran through Cindy. Jake was a friend of hers who had died in a car accident in the fourth grade. Jake, is it really you? Cindy sat up, her arms shaking with excitement. The pointer quickly moved to say, yeah. Over the next hour, Cindy held a conversation with Jake. Every day after school, Cindy would race up to her room and have a conversation with Jake about her life and about her future. But after a few days, the conversations became darker and angrier. By the second week, Cindy had the impression that she wasn't talking with Jake at all, but instead a dark and terrible imposter. By the end of the second week, the entity revealed itself as a demon and threatened Cindy that if she told anyone about their conversations, she would die. That Friday night, when her sisters got home, they found Cindy curled up in a corner crying. It took a week in a mental facility before Cindy could recover from the emotional damage that the entity caused her during those two fateful weeks of her childhood. Number 1. Diablo One boy did a Ouija board with a few friends. He set it up along with candles all around it. His friend Matt asked the first question, Is anyone there? There was no response. After asking more questions, the friends still had no answers. Then suddenly the TV turned on. Brushing this off as a technical fault, they then started to notice that each of the candles in the room were being put out one by one things got worse. Matt once again asked, who was there, and the planchette started to move. It spelled out Diablo. Then the planchette started to move frantically, and started spelling out, get out, get out. They all jumped up and switched the lights on and set fire to the board. It wasn't until after the session that they looked up what Diablo means. It's the Spanish word for devil. Those are five pretty disturbing Ouija board stories. If anyone has any other Ouija board experiences that they would like to share, please leave a comment below as I'd love to hear them. The Curiosity rover is part of NASA's Mars Science Mission. The rover landed on Mars on the 6th of August 2012. The goal of the rover was to investigate the climate and geology, assessing whether or not Mars could be explored by humans in the future. Although the goals of the rover are clear, many people question whether or not the planet has already been inhabited. Over the years, strange and mysterious photos have appeared from the rover, making people question what is actually on the planet and what the rover's true mission is. These five strange things have been discovered on Mars. Number five, the levitating orb. This mysterious photograph seems to show a sphere-shaped rock hovering a few inches above the ground. This photo was taken near Mount Sharp, a mountain area on Mars, 18,000 feet above the valley floor. At first glance, the object looks as though it is hovering, and we can even see a shadow being cast beneath it. Many people that believe in otherworldly beings have suggested that it could be advanced technology. However, these types of photos can play tricks on our minds. The object could be supernatural, or perhaps the camera angle is giving the illusion of hovering when the object is really laying on the ground. Number 4. The Pyramid The Curiosity rover photographed this pyramid structure on May the 7th, 2015. Paranormal enthusiasts have stated that it shows a near-perfect design and shape, and that the object is likely the result of intelligent design, and certainly not a trick of light or shadow. When first seeing this photo, it is very interesting. It looks like the pyramids we are used to seeing on Earth, and as we know, there is much speculation as to how the pyramids were built. However, a principal investigator of the Mars rover has stated that the structure in the photo is probably just a volcanic rock. 
Many volcanic rocks on Mars break and cleave in very sharp, angular ways, but many believers are frustrated that the photo has been labelled a rock. Physicists have even stated that they believe the red planet is already inhabited by humans, and that labelling a photo a rock will discourage people from believing the truth. This is a very interesting photo, but is it the work of intelligence, or simply the work of nature? Number 3. The Rodent Okay, so this is a personal favourite of mine, known as the Mars Rat. This rodent was spotted by the Curiosity rover sometime in September 2012. When first published, this photo aroused a lot of interest amongst UFO enthusiasts. They claimed that there was finally proof of life on Mars. The photo itself is very clear, and when I first saw it, I thought it may have been falsified. However, it is easy enough to check the NASA website to confirm its validity, so I went online to check and have posted a link in the description box for you to see for yourselves that this is a NASA original photo. Going back to the subject of the photo, Curiosity scientists are not sure what it is and have branded the photo, you guessed it, a rock. But some scientists have stated that if NASA do intend to send humans to Mars, they would have to test the conditions first. So perhaps this is a NASA experiment involving animals, or is the rodent an inhabitant of Mars? Number 2. The Crab this crab-like object was seen on Mars in late July 2015. When this photo was uploaded, it reminded many people of the facehuggers from the movie Alien. When the photo is blown up, we can see what looks like eight legs, just like crabs on Earth. This strange creature does look out of place hanging from the wall of the rock. Many people have argued about its size, with guesses ranging from a few feet to the size of a car, but NASA scientists have hit back and said that this is a case of pareidolia, where the brain tricks the eyes into seeing familiar shapes and objects, such as faces or animals within patterns and textures of clouds and rock surfaces. One scientist stated that people who want this to be true are going to see what they want to see, but conspiracy theorists are sticking by the crab theory. Number 1. The Sand Creature Quite possibly the most famous photo showing life on Mars, this strange-looking humanoid creature was spotted by the Mars Spirit Explorer. When this photo went live, many paranormal enthusiasts pointed to aliens and stated that this photo was evidence to prove that life on Mars exists. Surprisingly, there isn't much information about this photo. This makes conspiracy theorists believe in the photo even more. The mysterious creature was snapped in 2008, but the photo was quickly put to bed with scientists saying that the structure is not that tall, it's only a few centimetres high, it's just a rock. But what do you think? Here's something to bear in mind. Astronomers have measured the age of the universe to be approximately 13 to 15 billion years old, and it's important to remember that the Milky Way galaxy we live in is one among billions in space. There are so many mysteries in the universe. For example, in 1977, we received a signal from deep space that lasted 72 seconds. We still don't know how or where it came from. Whether you believe in other life forms or not, there is no denying that space is an amazing concept, while being seriously scary at the same time. So, those were my personal favourite photos of possible life on Mars. Are there any good ones that you think I may have missed? If so, please leave a comment below. I would love to hear what you think about the photos. Thank you for watching. Many children growing up will normally have a doll as a companion. They can make for good friends, but when the doll is haunted, that once sweet relationship can turn sinister. This is the story of Robert Otto and his doll. In the late 1800s,
Thomas Otto and his family moved to a mansion in Florida, which is now known as the Artist House. The Ottos were known to be stern with their servants, sometimes even mistreating them. It was the first treatment of one such servant that provides a twist in this story. This woman was hired to take care of their son, Robert. One day, Mrs. Otto supposedly witnessed her practicing black magic in their backyard and fired her. Before she left, the woman gave Robert a lifelike doll which stood three feet tall, had buttons for eyes, and was filled with straw. Dolls that resembled children were not unheard of during this time, but this one proved to be special. Robert named the doll after himself, and often dressed it in his clothes. Robert the doll became his trustworthy companion. The doll even had a seat at the dinner table, where Robert would sneak at bites of food when his parents weren't looking. Robert would even be tucked into bed with the boy at night. Soon this innocent relationship took on a strange nature. Soon after, Robert chose to be referred to by his middle name, Jean, after being scolded by his mother. He told her that Robert was the doll's name, not his. Jean was often heard in his toy room having conversations with Robert. Jean would often say something in a childish manner and responses could be heard in a much lower voice. Sometimes Jean would become very agitated, worrying the servants and his mother. She would, on occasions, burst in to find her son cowering in the corner of the room, while Robert sat perched in a chair or on the bed glaring at him. This was only the beginning. Household objects would be found thrown across the room. Wherever these unusual acts took place, Jean always said, Robert did it. The boy took the punishment, but always insisted that the blame was Robert's. As the mischief grew, more and more servants took their leave as new ones were hired. The Otto's relatives felt it was time to do something. With the recommendation of a great aunt, Jean's parents removed Robert from his care and placed him in a box in the attic. This is where he was kept for many years. After the death of his father, Jean was wheeled his boyhood home. He decided to live in the Victorian mansion with his new wife. Jean had become an artist and felt the house was spacious and would provide a place for him to paint. He went to the attic and dusted off his old childhood toy. He became attached to the doll, despite his wife's displeasure. Jean would take the doll along with them everywhere they went. He even sat in his favourite little chair while Jean and his wife slept nearby. The turret room became Robert's domain after Mrs. Otto moved him back in the attic. Their marriage slowly became sour until Mrs. Otto supposedly went insane and died of unknown reasons. Jean followed soon behind. Robert supposedly attacked people, sometimes locking them in the attic. People who passed by claimed to hear evil laughter coming from the turret room. For some time, Robert remained in the empty house by himself until a new family purchased the mansion and restored it. The doll was once again moved to the attic. This pleased it as much as the last time. The doll was often found throughout the house. On one night, Robert was found at the foot of the owner's bed, giggling with a kitchen knife in hand. This was enough to send them fleeing from the home. Robert was later moved to the East Martello Museum in Key West, where he sits perched in a glass box. Despite his new living quarters, the doll was believed to not have given up his menacing ways. Visitors and employees claimed to have seen the doll move as well as smile. One employee cleaned Robert, turned off all the lights, and left for the night. The next day, he returned to find the lights turned on, Robert sitting in a different position than the night before, and a fresh layer of dust on his shoes. Some say he'll even curse you. If you want to take a picture of him, you must ask politely. He'll tilt his head in permission. However, if he doesn't and you take the picture anyways, a curse will fall upon you and anyone who accompanied you to the museum. To this day, Robert remains at the East Martello Museum, in his sailor suit clutching his stuffed line, continuing his menacing ways. Over the years, many ghost sightings have been caught on camera, some of which are not only creepy, but also unexplained. So let's count down 5 creepy ghost sightings. As scary as it looks, this picture has been shrouded in mystery for years. 
The story goes back to the mid-1950s, taking place in Texas. The Cooper family had just moved into an old house that they bought, and were really excited about it. So they thought of preserving this memory by taking a picture of the whole family in their new home. But little did they know there was someone else joining in on their celebration. A spooky figure hanging upside down from the ceiling. Now, some will argue this photo is a hoax. Its original source is unknown. The family do look like they're from the 1950s, but that's just a guess. Some say details of the photo suggest it's been altered, which would indicate a more modern origin. There's another story to this mysterious photo that states the family was aware of the body when it fell. They had just moved into the house and took the photo after dinner. As the photo was taken, the body fell from the ceiling, and the family was captured just before they reacted. Both stories are unsettling. This photo was captured by a nurse on a surveillance camera at an unknown hospital. The images show a dark, crouched figure resembling a demon standing on top of a patient's body who was lying in bed. The nurse also noticed the black figure walking up and down the body of the patient. Within a few hours of the dark figure's appearance, the patient had died. As creepy as it may sound, demon-like figures have been reportedly seen at hospitals. Some say hospitals are the breeding ground for demons. It's where they lurk about, waiting for the next soul to die so they can drag them to hell. However, this is of course just a theory. Its precise origin is unknown, but it traces back to at least 2013, when it was uploaded to the internet. Some paranormal investigators have speculated that the mysterious figure on top of the bed was a mythological being known as a mare. A mare is known to be an evil spirit or goblin in folklore, which rides on people's chests while they're asleep, causing bad dreams or nightmares. The mare is similar to other mythical creatures that cause sleep paralysis. Of course, these are just theories. What do you think? Is this a real demon? Also known as the Ghost Bridge, it is surrounded by several different versions of the story. The ghost walking the bridge is a wife who was thrown off the bridge into the water and killed by her soldier husband in the 1960s. One story also mentions that on certain nights you can see her decomposing body walking under the bridge. It is said that if you turn your car off on the bridge, it will not start again unless you push it off. Some have said that ghosts relive moments of their death. So could this be what people are seeing? The last moments of this woman's life, before she was thrown off the bridge. Union Cemetery, located in eastern Connecticut, is considered to be one of the most haunted cemeteries in the United States. Although several ghosts have been seen at this cemetery, the White Lady happens to be the most famous sighting. Many people have managed to capture her on camera, and she has even been caught on film. She is believed to have long, dark hair, and she can be seen wearing a nightgown. Her most favorite places where she frequently makes an appearance are usually on the roadway alongside Route 59 and Route 111, where she is often hit by oncoming vehicles. There was a report of her being hit by a fireman in 1993, which left a dent on his vehicle, and he even heard a thud while hitting her. As the woman appeared in front of his car, he also saw a farmer with a straw hat sitting in the car seat beside him. The cemetery is out of bounds at night and is strictly patrolled by the police. The image above appears to be her face with a stream of spooky energy alongside. This photo was taken during an investigation of Bachelors Grove Cemetery near Chicago on August the 10th, 1991 reputed to be one of the most haunted cemeteries in the US. Bachelors Grove has been the site of well over 100 different reports of strange phenomena. The area is extremely photogenic, and many have come away with alleged spirit forms, strange lights, shadowy figures, or full-blown apparitions. During a visit in August of 1991, Ghost Research Society members conducted a full-fledged investigation. All members were given maps of the cemetery, and instructed to walk through and note any changes in electronic, electromagnetic, and iron readings, as well as their own psychic experiences. After the maps were compared, it became apparent that several investigators had indicated one or two areas where unusual readings or sensory experiences were encountered. Returning to those areas, the team attempted additional tests and photographic experiments, with both black and white, infrared, and other types of film. After the film was processed, it was discovered that on one frame there was the unmistakable image of a strange woman sitting on a checkerboard tombstone, in an old-fashioned, turn-of-the-century, full-length dress. She had long brown hair, and was staring off into the distance. On closer examination, parts of her body are semi-transparent, especially her head and legs. 
Everyone on the team was stunned with this revelation, as it seemed to coincide with the electromagnetic readings the team members were experiencing at the time. It is one of the clearest images of a ghost ever seen to date. So that was five creepy ghost sightings that have been caught on camera. Number 5, Fresno Nightcrawler The Fresno Nightcrawler incident is one of the spookiest videos caught on tape. The two creatures were captured on a home security camera in Fresno at around 1am. The creature seemed to be wearing some form of white cloak and move with almost an airy lack of gravity or weight. The television show Factor Fake tried to debunk the Fresno Nightcrawlers and were unable to do so. Number 4, UFO Shoots at Chemtrails We've spoken about chemtrails before on the channel, clouds of ice left behind by an airplane as they journey through the sky. In this clip, however, we see something very interesting floating around a chemtrail. A glowing white orb seems to float around the trails before eventually firing several shots at the clouds. The reason behind this activity is unknown, only that the supposed craft launches multiple shots into the clouds and is followed by a much quicker orb some way through the video. Number 3, UFO in the Upper Atmosphere Some conspiracy theorists call this video definite proof that advanced spacecraft are buzzing around planet Earth. The video shot from one of NASA's infrared cameras show an orb of light peacefully floating through the boundary of Earth's atmosphere. The interesting part is when the supposed ship is seemingly shot at by something, it turns around at an incredibly fast speed, speeds that any human ship would be completely incapable of achieving. Number 2, Skinny Bob. Shot in 1950, the Skinny Bob videos are consistently one of the hardest to debunk and most compelling to watch. Released in 2011 in three phases by Evan0135, the Skinny Bob videos show alien saucers, dead aliens, and an alien being weighed and measured, and finally a group of greys walking around an indisclosed area. The story goes that the KGB in Russia shot down a ship and recovered the aliens within it and eventually made contact and a treaty with the aliens. Real or fake? The jury is still out on that one. Number 1, Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters are without a doubt the strangest and most unexplainable incidents caught on camera, and we aren't talking about the band. The term Foo Fighter was coined by Allied pilots in the middle of World War II and related to small globes of unexplainable light that would often harass and fly around the airplanes. They were often found over German airspace, which gave Allied fighters the idea that they may be a secret weapon that the Germans had been working on. Were Foo Fighters one of the first reported signs of alien life, or did Nazis actually manage to get Die Glocke off the Number 10, Ricky McCormick. On June 30th, 1999, in the middle of a field in St. Charles County, Missouri, the body of a young man named Ricky McCormick had been found. 72 hours earlier, McCormick had been noted as missing, despite that his body was already very badly composed. It wasn't until 2011 that the FBI revealed that they had found two notes in McCormick's pocket. These notes were written as a complex cipher that the high school dropout could never have written. The cipher and Ricky's mystery have never been solved. Number 9, The Hagley Wood Skeleton In 1943, a group of boys were illegally hunting in Hagley Woods in the UK. They stumbled across a hollow elk tree that hid the skeleton of a young girl. They reported the skeleton to police and upon closer inspection, they found that the girl's mouth had been stuffed with silk. 
There had also been a gold wedding ring and a shoe hidden within the tree. Later that year, graffiti began to appear questioning who put Lubella down the winch elm. To this day, no arrests have been made regarding the Hagley Wood skeleton, and the question has never been answered. Number 8. The Oakville Blobs on August 7, 1994, the residents of Oakville, Washington were treated to a strange translucent set of jelly-like blobs falling from the sky. They were reported to be half the size of a grain of rice each. Tests by the Washington State Department of Ecology claimed that the blobs had once been alive, with some hospital lab technicians later going on to say that they contained human white blood cells. There are many theories ranging from bioweapon testing to airplane waste to even a scam by the residents of the town. But there has never been an official answer to the case of the Oakville Blobs. Number 7, Ditla Pass. On February 2nd, 1959, nine ski hikers died in the northern Ural Mountains of Russia. The tent had been ripped open from the inside and five of the hikers died near it. The other four sported significant injuries which included fractured skulls and broken ribs. One was missing her tongue and eyes. Strangely enough, there were no external injuries to the bodies. When the clothing of the hikers was tested, high levels of radiation were found. Declassified files later revealed another group who camped 50 kilometers south saw strange orange spheres floating in the night sky. Could aliens have been the cause? Number 6. The Wow Signal The Wow Signal was detected in 1977 during an SETI project. The signal was a super strong radio signal that came from deep space and has never been picked up again. It lasted for 72 seconds, which was the maximum length of a time the Big Ear Telescope could observe. Many scientists claim that the length and intensity of the pattern point to extraterrestrial origin, though this has never been confirmed. Number 5. The Feet of the Northwest Seaboard between August of 2007 and February 11, 2016, over 16 dismembered feet, still clad in their socks and shoes, washed up somewhere along the northwest seaboard. Only one foot has been identified in July of 2008 and belonged to a man who was depressed and likely killed himself. These events are not the first cases of dismembered feet in the area. On July of 1914, the Vancouver Sun reported that a human leg encased in a high boot was found near the mouth of the Salmon River. The feet of the Northwest Seaboard remains a mystery to all to this day. Number 4. The Solway Spaceman In the summer of 1964, a fisherman from Carlisle took a picture of his daughter and what looked like a spaceman walking around behind her. Jim Templeman, the photographer, claims that the man in white had not been there before when he took the photo, and many analysts have stated that the photo is not fake and has not been tampered with. Templeman also claimed that he was visited by two men in black who only identified each other as number 9 and number 11. A link was also made to the planned launch of a missile in South Australia. When scientists at the site saw the photo, they reported seeing two men in the firing range who looked identical to the Solway spaceman. The missile planned to be launched had in fact been built at an RAF base only a few miles away where the Solway spaceman picture had actually been taken. Number 3. The Voynich Manuscript Named after Wilfred Voynich, who bought the book in 1912, the Voynich Manuscript has been dated back to the early 15th century. It is a book written by hand and illustrated in a language that is entirely unknown. Though it has been studied by many cryptographers, no one has cracked the code. The illustrations divide the book into different sections, herbal, astronomical, cosmological, pharmaceutical, and recipes. The illustrations have baffled experts. Many of the drawn plants seem to resemble any known species. Some believe it is a hoax, but most state it's too complex to be fake. Number 2. The Pollock Twins In 1957, two sisters, Joanna and Jacqueline Pollock, were both killed in a tragic car accident. 
A year later, their mother gave birth to two twins, Jennifer and Gillian. Jennifer, the younger twin, had scars and birthmarks on her body that matched Jacqueline, the younger sister of the deceased. The twins began to ask for toys that belonged to the deceased girls that they themselves had never seen before. One day, they wanted to go to a park they haven't been to, but the deceased sisters had been to. At one point, the girls played a game in which Jennifer had laid down on the floor with her head in Gillian's lap and pretended she was dying. Gillian said, the blood's coming out of your eyes, and that's where the car hit you. The scary thing about this was that the parents had never discussed the incident with the twins. At the age of five, the odd behavior stopped and the girls grew up as happy, normal kids. Number 1 Flight MH370 the biggest, strangest, unsolved mystery in the past decade is the mystery of the Malaysian Airlines flight MH370. With no bad weather or technical issues logged, the disappearance of the MH370 flight stumped experts from across the world. The flight disappeared from air traffic radars an hour after takeoff, though it was still tracked by Malaysian military radars as it departed westwards from its planned flight path. Nothing was found of the craft until late July in 2015 when a piece of debris confirmed to be the Flaprion from the plane washed up on a reunion island. Multiple small pieces of debris have been found, but the bulk of the airplane is still nowhere to Number 10, Europa. Mankind's never-ending search for alien life doesn't seem to be coming to an end anytime soon. Until we know the true answer, it's important to come up with a few guesses before spending the time and money to investigate. One of the few places scientists believe could host alien life would be one of Jupiter's moons known as Europa. This certainly isn't the same kind of moon we're used to seeing in the sky at nighttime. This is one of four Galilean moons orbiting Jupiter, and what's interesting about it is that it has a thick layer of ice, and beneath this layer of ice is liquid water. The thick layer of ice on the crust can act as a way to block out harmful radiation, which is always bad for any form of life. This doesn't necessarily mean the types of aliens we're accustomed to seeing on films, but possibly some type of extremophile like the tardigrade. But with liquid water, there's certainly a chance of alien life. Who knows? Number 9. Mars Despite the popular belief of many scientists, others are still quite hopeful that Mars could support some life form, or could have hosted life at some point. Despite our usage of the Mars rover, we've only explored a very small percentage of the red planet. Looking for life is certainly no easy task, and our rovers just give us a generalized outlook of what's on the surface. Nonetheless, the Mars rover has picked up mysterious images like this photo that some people claim to be a giant crab. Who knows if there are life forms below the surface, or if they're able to survive places on Mars where the temperature could be warmer. A NASA geologist at the University of Aberdeen announced recently that Mars could form the element of hydrogen, which is a necessary element for life. The hunt for life on Mars will continue, and maybe the planet right next to us could have aliens. Number 8. Titan This large moon that orbits Saturn is also another place where aliens could be hiding in our very own solar system. Those sneaky aliens, the surface is full of liquid methane and ethane, and many have not ruled out the possibility of life here. Although it's far colder than Earth, some believe that the oceans of liquid methane could actually replace water in some ways and be enough to support life on this moon. Who says only liquid water is needed anyways? If somehow organisms could survive in these conditions, you better believe they would look something completely different than humans. While the surface temperature there might be something like negative 290 degrees Fahrenheit, this could be too cold for life that we're familiar with. During an experiment, a cell membrane was modeled that would theoretically be able to survive in liquid methane that we see in this photo. Number 7. Proxima Centauri B So those were some examples of places that could be hiding alien life in our very own solar system. Astronomers find new solar systems in our galaxy all the time, but as of right now, there's at least 500 that we know of. So what are the odds we find a planet similar to ours in our very own galaxy? Pretty good, actually, and science scientists believe that they found an exoplanet that appears to have the potential to be just like Earth. It's within what's known as a Goldilocks zone, which is basically a part of a solar system that's not too close to the sun, yet not too far away to support life. This orbits a star roughly 46.6 million miles away, which is roughly twice as close as Earth is to the sun. However, this star is a lot less powerful than the sun. A team of scientists collaborated and believe that they've spotted some signs of oxygen, water vapor, and even methane. 
Number six, Kepler 22b. Imagine a planet similar to Earth that was twice the size of Earth, but almost completely covered in water. Scientists actually don't know for sure if it has liquid water because it's about 620 light years away. This was discovered by the Kepler Space Telescope in 2011 and also appears to be right in the exact location of a habitable zone. The exact composition of what this planet is made of hasn't been fully determined and no one knows exactly if life is possible here, but the striking blue color would lead any amateur to believe that it's full of water and because of the distance, it probably isn't like Neptune, where gases are what causes the blueness. Number 5. Exoplanet Solar System So as of right now, there's only one true place where we know intelligent life exists, and that's our home planet, or that's what we're told to believe. But imagine a solar system of a total of seven different Earth-like planets all lined up right next to each other. It is certainly a reality, and in 2017, not just one or two Earth-like planets were discovered, but an astonishing total of seven exoplanets all orbiting a small star, Trappist-1, about 40 light-years away. Just in case you were wondering, that's about 235 trillion miles away from planet Earth so we probably won't make contact with any life forms that could live here. Is it truly possible that not one of these seven planets couldn't sustain some kind of life form? It would almost seem to defy all odds if there was no life here. Number 4. Kepler 186f The astronomers aren't too creative when it comes up with planet names, and they once again called this place Kepler after the telescope that found it, but gave it a different number. This is one of the first exoplanets NASA discovered, and it's about three times closer to the star than Earth is to the Sun. Once again, we don't know the details of the atmosphere or what the weather is like here, but we do know that it's in the perfect location for life. If it were to have a rocky surface, it would have similar gravity to planet Earth. They tend to believe that the surface is indeed rocky, and the M dwarf star has been long enough for life to possibly develop on Kepler-186. Since it's somewhat further out in the Goldilocks zone, the water here could be frozen, but since it's larger, the atmosphere could be thick enough to keep the planet warmer. If we only had a spaceship to get us 490 light years away, maybe we can find out if the aliens are hiding here. Number 3. Lake Baikal could aliens be here on planet Earth, hiding out the entire time but we had no clue? Lake Baikal in Russia, just north of Mongolia, is the world's deepest lake. It's been home to several UFO encounters, and witnesses are beginning to believe that there could be aliens here. It seems to make sense. They'd be living in one of Earth's biggest freshwater sources, and this area here is extremely remote. The very few people that actually venture off into this part of the world actually report some kind of bizarre encounter. At such large depths, it could be the perfect place for aliens to be hiding, so watch out. Number 2. Antarctica Antarctica is certainly the most mysterious continent in the world. There is so much of it that we haven't explored yet, and it's even possible that aliens could be hiding somewhere here. Many have spotted mysterious flying objects in this part of the world, and some believe that somewhere in a hollowed out ice cave is a secret alien base. Recently, a pyramid on Antarctica was discovered, which have led many to believe that it's not a natural structure. The ice of this continent can reach a few miles thick in some parts, which would be a great place to melt a deep hole with some type of laser technology in order to build some place to hide out at. Since we know so little about what's under the surface of all the ice until it melts, we just don't know the answer. And number one, Area 51. The government expects us to simply believe that Area 51 is nothing but a testing base for new aircraft, but this base wasn't even acknowledged by the government until 2013, despite over 40 years of active use. Many believe that after the mysterious crash at Roswell, alien bodies were transported from New Mexico to be stored at this top secret military facility located at the National Nevada Security Site. This base in the middle of the desert is extremely isolated, and anyone who drives within 10 10 miles of it will be spotted by the camo dudes. Deadly force can and probably will be used to anyone who trespasses. There is certainly something the government doesn't want us to know about here, and it seems to be a little bit more than just testing new aircraft. If they were hiding evidence of extraterrestrial life, this would be the perfect place. <laughs>
Others believe that the ice hides traces of the Atlantean civilization, supposedly the first highly developed beings on the planet. But not many know that you need to be afraid of something quite different. February 6, 2012, Russian scientists finished drilling a huge well in four meter thick ice and reached a huge lake. It had not seen sunlight for millions of years. Is the opening of the lake like opening Pandora's box? What was kept in the ice and frost and what will come to life with the arrival of man? What do you think is there? Write your ideas and comments under this video. A mysterious ancient meteorite found in Antarctica. Due to its vast expanse, Antarctica is an excellent place to search for meteorites. In 2015, scientists from NASA and Stanford University found that a meteorite the size of a potato that flew from Mars and fell in Antarctica 13 years ago contains fossilized samples of ancient microbes from the Red Planet. Elongated Skulls Archaeologists have discovered three elongated skulls in the La Pile region, Antarctica. The discovery was a complete surprise to the world of areology. Skulls were the first human remains discovered in Antarctica. It was believed that the continent had never been visited by people before the modern era. We did not just find the remains of a man, we found elongated skulls. I have to pinch myself every time I wake up. I cannot believe this. This will make us reconsider our views on the history of mankind as a whole. The archaeologist who discovered the remains said excitedly, earlier such skulls were found in Peru and Egypt, which indicates that ancient civilizations entered into contact long before we were told by history books. And this discovery shows us that there was contact thousands of years ago between civilizations in Africa, South America, and Antarctica. Dinosaurs lived in Antarctica. In the mid-1980s and early 90s, scientists discovered several fossilized reptilian remains that once ruled the planet. Thanks to this find, it was found that dinosaurs lived on the southern continent 200 to 70 million years ago. Scientists suggest that living things could survive there, since the air temperature in those days was 50 degrees higher, and also because the Antarctic land was located elsewhere, roughly in the southwest of the modern Pacific Ocean. The Pyramids For many years, people have been talking about certain pyramids located on the territory of Antarctica. According to some researchers, they are evidence of the existence of a proto-civilization. Or maybe it's just ice buildup. The first news about the existence of man-made pyramids in Antarctica appeared on the internet in mid-June 2013. The main evidence was a slideshow of several photographs and several explanatory texts. Everyone can find and view these pyramids from above with the help of Google Maps. If it was not people who created them, the question arises, why did such bizarre shapes form? A special expedition will be sent to Antarctica to study the mysterious objects. Petrified Remains In 2009, scientists found in the ice of Antarctica petrified remains belonging to an animal the size of a cat that could lay eggs. This animal was a distant relative of modern mammals living about 250 million years ago. It is particularly interesting that this species survived a mass extinction, which could be the result of global warming. It migrated from southern Africa to cool Antarctica. In those days, Antarctica was part of a supercontinent called Pangaea, which was formed about 299 million years ago and collapsed about 200 million years ago. Bloody Waterfall It is a stream of red liquid that flows out of the Taylor Glacier in Antarctica. The color of this unusual waterfall is connected to a large content of iron oxide in the water. Salt water, rich in iron, periodically leave the crack in the glacier. The source of water for the Bloody Waterfall is a lake, which is a few kilometers away from it, and covered with a glacier 400 meters thick. 
This lake appeared after the retreat of the seawater, which covered the valleys and the onset of ice 1.5 million years ago. The salinity of the water in the lake exceeds the salinity of the world's oceans by four times. So the water in the waterfall does not freeze until minus 10 degrees. On board the plane, which disappeared on January 23, 2013, there were three Canadians. The search was not successful. A year later, the wreckage of the plane was found on a very steep slope at the top of Mount Elizabeth. Most likely, the plane crashed against a mountain in the hopes that someone could survive. It is known only that on January 23, the plane that made the flight between the American station Amundsen Scott, located at the South Pole, and the Italian station Mario Zuccelli on the coast of Terranova Island, gave an alarm signal being 450 kilometers from the pole. 100-year-old whiskey. One of the amazing finds was two boxes of excellent Scotch whiskey lying under the ice layer for exactly 100 years. Discovering the find, the researchers did not immediately remove it from under the ice, fearing damage. They waited three years before special tools were delivered to the drilling site. The glacier was drilled and the drawers were neatly removed. The head driller replied to the journalist's question, do you want to try the drink? Said that it is much more important to study the find than to possess it. Even if it's the best whiskey on earth, I will not drink it. Let it remain a mystery to me. An eerie creature. An unknown creature was found by an American expedition in the thickness of ice at a depth of 675 meters. Remember the horror film, Thing? It seems to be based on real events. The size of the creature is 20 centimeters. It has a two centimeter retractable jaw. Scientists are trying to determine its origin, classification, and method of nutrition. It is already clear that Antarctica is fraught with a lot of mysteries. It is also necessary to think whether it is necessary to solve them. There is life under the kilometers of ice of Antarctica. Researchers drilled a hole 730 meters deep in the Antarctic Ross ice shelf and sent a robotic probe down. It explored an area in which there is no sunlight. Scientists expected that they would not find life there except for microbes with a slow metabolism. Instead, they made an amazing discovery. Under the thick layer of ice lived small fish, starfish, sponges, anemones, and other creatures. Frozen ship. In 1914, during the Antarctic expedition, commanded by the famous polar explorer Ernst Shackleton, the crew of 28 set the goal to cross Antarctica. The ship Endurance had hardly reached the continent and was then surrounded and crushed by ice. For almost 17 months, the people fought for survival and embarked on a desperate hike to the campsite of whalers. Thanks to clear organization, discipline, and the skillful command of Shackleton, all 28 people survived and returned to their homeland. Ten Scariest Urban Legends of America. Ten. Green Man. This is one of the few stories on this list that can be traced back to a real person, including the more frightening details. In Koppel, Pennsylvania, it became common to see a horribly disfigured man walking down the darkened streets at night. He was given the name Charlie No-Face, or Green Man, and everyone had their own story of sighting him. That's because he was 100% real. He was born Raymond Robinson in 1910, and at the age of eight, he was trying to view a bird's nest on Murado Bridge when there was an accident. He touched a power line, which electrocuted him and caused horrific facial injuries that never properly healed. Because his appearance tended to cause panic and make babies cry, he spent most of his 74 years hiding out in his home with his family. But at night, he would make the streets his own, taking long walks when people were less likely to see him. 
Obviously, this didn't work all the time, hence he became a living urban legend in his town, where some people used to drive around all night just hoping to catch a glimpse. 9. The Suskin Screamer is there anything creepier than a dead bride? Well, apparently not, because stories of these tragic ladies crop up all over the world. On Susquehan Road in Pennsylvania, under what used to be called the Susquehanna Railroad Bridge, yet another of these legends has taken hold. According to many locals, if you drive onto the bridge, turn off your car, put the keys on the roof, and wait, you'll be able to see the Susquehan Screamer in your rearview mirror. Most stories agree that she's the ghost of a woman who hung herself on the bridge after being dumped at the altar. She was supposed to have screamed loudly as she jumped to her death. But there are other stories from the same area, including a creature that had, quote, webbed feet with long claws and had a huge head. Bigfoot-like encounters are also allegedly common in the region. Maybe someone should ask the dead bride if she's seen anything suspicious the next time she pops into their back seat. Eight. The Snallygaster. In the 1730s, German immigrants in Frederick County, Maryland claimed to have encountered a terrifying creature. Shortly after founding their town, the residents began reporting sightings of a beast that was half bird, half reptile, with a beak made of metal with razor-sharp teeth. It also sported tentacles like an octopus that it used to seize people and carry them away, presumably to feed to its bird-lizard robot squid babies. When you first hear this story, not to mention the creature's moniker of the Snallygaster, it's easy to scoff, but the plot thickened a bit for residents when sightings of these creatures were reported everywhere from New Jersey to Ohio. Of course, sightings reported and hard evidence are worlds apart, but we aren't going to nitpick. 7. The Ghost of Stowe Lake Golden Gate Park in San Francisco, California is pretty well known for its paranormal stories. If you believe locals, it's so full of spirits that you could run the risk of crashing straight into one while jogging. They might as well rename it No One Is Alive Here Park. But one ghost story has been the most popular and circulated ever since it appeared in the San Francisco Chronicle on January 6, 1908. That's the story of the ghost of Stowe Lake. The newspaper piece starts with a man named Arthur Pigeon. He was going just a bit too fast in his car when he was pulled over by police but he told the officers it wasn't his fault as he was trying to get away. He claimed to have seen the ghost of a woman at Stowe Lake. She had long, fair hair and was barefoot. The legends always claim this woman was a mother who lost a child or else killed her child and then herself. America seems to be full of women offing themselves and their offspring. 6. Patterson Road In Houston, Texas, cultural memories of the Civil War have sparked numerous urban legends. One of the creepiest is centered around Patterson Road, located near Highway 6. The claims here tend to differ depending on whom you ask. However, everyone agrees that the ghosts involved were Civil War soldiers. Because, as we all know, every bit of land someone from that period walked across has become a ghostly hotspot by default. Believers say that if you go on the Langham Creek Bridge on Patterson at night and park your car with the lights off, you'll hear tapping or see a mist surround your car. More skeptical locals will point out that parking your car with your lights off on a busy bridge is a good way to become a ghost yourself. 5. Lillian Gray This legend all started thanks to a tombstone located in the middle of a cemetery in Salt Lake City, Utah. It belongs to a woman named Lillian E. Gray, who died in the 1950s at the age of 77. At first glance, it doesn't look any different from the other graves surrounding it. Nothing catches the eye, that is until you see the inscription written underneath. Victim of the Beast 666. Now that is a bit unusual. What could this enigmatic statement mean? Is it some kind of accusation made by the believers in one of the most religious cities in the nation? Could she have been sacrificed by a satanic cult? Was she a devil worshiper herself? An innocent woman punished in a Salem-style witch hunt? Those are only some of the rumors intrigued citizens have come up with to explain it. Of course, there are always those who have to come along and ruin the fun. It looks like the inscription was commissioned by the woman's paranoid anti-government husband who blamed the police for her death. It's hard to say whether that makes the whole thing less creepy or more so. 4. Goatman Some urban legends are created by adults who want to scare their kids into behaving. Anyone who grew up with Mexican parents will be well used to this method and probably still feel a deep-seated fear of El Cucuy. 
Other stories are more likely to have been made up by your jerk older brother who wants to freak you out, such as the case of the Goatman of Beltsville, Maryland. Who is the Goatman? Well, there's no official story, but most claim that a scientist at the Beltsville Agricultural Research Center did experiments on goats. This somehow led him to actually becoming part goat, a kind of animal-human hybrid. He said to roam the backwoods of Fletchertown Road attacking people and cars with his axe. Why a scientist turned goat man would carry an axe isn't uh, actually explained. 3. Dog Boy Arkansas is one of those areas that's filled with ghost stories. Most of the older houses seem to have a spirit attached, so it would take a lot for a legend to stand out in the crowd. But the tale that has managed to claw its way to the top is the legend of Dog Boy. In 1954, Gerald Floyd Bettis was born to Floyd and Aline Bettis in what has since been named the Bettis House. Those who knew him claim he used to catch dogs and cats and keep them in his home as a young boy, but he wasn't playing veterinarian. Instead, he would horribly torture and kill the creatures, but what he's really known for is his treatment of his parents. The story goes that he imprisoned them in the attic, keeping them there for years. According to police reports, he did abuse his parents quite badly, but wasn't arrested for it until after the death of his father and the continued abuse of his mother. He died in prison of a drug overdose. Since then, people have claimed that paranormal activity is common in the house. Flickering lights, strange noises, and moving objects have all been reported. Considering Bettis once threw his father out of a window, that seems to be getting off relatively light in the haunting department. 2. Charman a well-known urban legend in California comes from the Ojai Valley in Camp Comfort County Park. They say the spirit of a man burnt in a fire will emerge from the forest and attack cars and hikers. He's called Char Man because the majority of his face and body could be described as, well, extra crispy. There are several versions of Char Man's origin, but they all begin with a wildfire that occurred in the park in 1948. The main story goes that a father and son were caught in the blaze and the older man was killed, but the son survived. And when a rescue team arrived, they found that the boy had strung up his father and pulled off his skin. He then disappeared into the woods. Another story makes the victims a husband and wife, claiming that the man went mad as he lay trapped and injured in the fire, unable to aid his wife, who was screaming for his help. Either way, it's said that if you drive onto a bridge located in the park and get out of your car, Char Man will come. A horribly burned man will run at you and attack, trying to tear off your skin, perhaps to take as his own. 1. Bobby Mackey's Hell Portal Bobby Mackey's Music World is a popular honky-tonk bar in Wilder, Kentucky owned by country singer Bobby Mackey. There are three associated urban legends that have become so popular they are now considered a selling point for the establishment. The first is that there is an actual portal to hell located in the well room, which allows demons to come into our realm. It isn't clear why they would want to, but maybe they're really into country ballads and overpriced beer. As for the two other stories, they're more traditional hauntings. First, you have Pearl Bryan, a real pregnant woman who was found decapitated in the late 19th century. Her lover Scott Jackson and his friend Alonzo Walling were hanged for her murder. Second is the legend of a woman named Johanna who is said to have fallen in love with a singer at the club that used to exist behind Music World. Her angry father supposedly hanged her lover in his dressing room, leading her to poison herself in retribution. Bobby Mackey wrote a song about the incident which strongly suggests she is still haunting his bar. Ten Intriguing UFO Incidents 10. Battle of Los Angeles, 1942 The United States was plunged into World War II in 1942. In February, only two short months after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, anti-aircraft guns began firing over the city of Los Angeles. When strange lights appeared in the sky and had been witnessed by thousands, everyone's first assumption was that the Japanese were staging another attack. Strangely, the anti-aircraft fire brought nothing down, even though their radar had shown an unidentifiable aerial target over the city, and witnesses said that they had seen a large object hovering in the air that night. 
Later, a journalist's photo of the battle scene, showing what looked like a large black triangular craft, sparked major controversy among UFO skeptics and only deepened the mystery. 9. Japan Airlines Flight 1628, 1986 Japan Airlines Flight 1628 was a UFO incident that occurred on November 17, 1986, involving a Japanese Boeing 747 cargo aircraft. The aircraft was en route from Paris to Tokyo with a cargo of wine. At around 5.11 p.m. as it transited the skies over Alaska, the crew first witnessed two unidentified objects to their left. These objects abruptly rose from below and closed in to surround their aircraft. Each object seemed to display two rectangular thrusters that appeared to be glowing, though their bodies remained concealed by darkness. When closest, the aircraft's cabin was seemingly lit up and the captain could feel the thrusters heat in his face. The two crafts departed. Then came a third, much larger disc-shaped object which started to trail them, causing the pilots to request a new route. Air traffic control obliged and requested an oncoming flight to confirm the unidentified traffic. But when it and the military craft sighted Japan Airlines at around 5.51 p.m., no other craft could be confirmed. The sighting of 50 minutes ended in the vicinity of Denali. 8. The Hudson Valley Boomerang Sightings, 1982 to 1995. UFO sightings have occurred across the globe for hundreds of years, but for Hudson Valley, New York, sightings suddenly hit their peak. For 13 years, between 1982 and 1995, more than 7,000 cases, that's right, 7,000, were investigated and documented by a team of investigators led by Philip J. Imbrogno. The heaviest period of sightings occurred between the end of 1982 and 1986, when more than 5,000 people reported seeing the object. You may have heard it called the Westchester Boomerang due to some of the earliest reports coming from Westchester County in New York State. The object was supposedly huge and often flew close to the ground. Some witnesses went on record describing it as a flying city and as big as three football fields. We can only speculate on what this was and what size it must have been, but what we do know is it's definitely no secret weapon, hologram, formation of planes or helicopters, nor anything else man-made. So far, there's no conventional explanation for the Hudson Valley Boomerang. 7. Barney and Betty Hill, 1961 Barney and Betty Hill were an American couple returning from a trip to Canada, and while traveling through a rural portion of New Hampshire, they spotted a strange light in the sky. Betty assumed that she was witnessing a shooting star, only it moved upward. Not far off from the town of Woodstock, they decided to pull over and stop their car to get a better look at it. What happened next was a tale of alien abduction. Upon pulling over, Barney, using binoculars, observed what he reasoned was a commercial airliner traveling towards its destination. However, Barney soon changed his mind, because without looking as if it had turned, the object rapidly descended in his direction. Using his binoculars, Barney claimed to have seen about 8 to 11 figures who were peering out of the object's windows. Startled by this, he tore the binoculars away from his eyes and ran back to the car. In a near hysterical state, he told his wife, quote, they're going to capture us. Immediately, the Hills heard various buzzing sounds that seemed to ricochet off of their car, sending a tingling sensation through their bodies. The Hills swore that during that time, they both entered an altered state of mind. After more buzzing, they noticed that they had traveled 35 miles, but had no recollection of the journey. The couple later underwent hypnosis, in which they both related a similar tale of being taken aboard a UFO and examined by gray aliens, just like ones that have been reported by other alleged abductees. 6. The London Olympic Games 2012 Anyone that watched or participated in the London Olympic Games in 2012 will probably remember this one. As fireworks lit up the sky above the 2012 Olympics opening ceremony, which was watched by around a billion people, something else was seen among the darkness in the night sky, a UFO. It seemed to tick all the UFO boxes, a metallic saucer-shaped object with a bulge in the middle. But no one has yet stepped forward to explain the slow-moving object. 
Previously, Nick Pope, one of the UK's top UFO experts, predicted only weeks prior that mass summer events would be a prime target for UFOs to present themselves to mankind. However, skeptics say that it was most likely a blimp or a helicopter. But overseers of the Olympics, plus the event planners, claimed that no aircraft was cleared to be around the vicinity during this time. Of course, with the Olympics being one of the biggest well-known events for us humans, who's to say that visitors from elsewhere didn't want to check out the celebration as well? 5. Washington, D.C. UFO Incident, 1952 it was July 12, 1952, when the residents of Washington, D.C. witnessed several UFOs flying overhead. What started as a series of reports about unidentified flying objects soon became one of the most publicized sightings to ever take place. Air traffic controller Ed Nugent was sitting in front of his radar screen at Washington National Airport when he suddenly saw seven unusual blips appear on screen. No known aircraft were in the area, and there was no explanation for the presence of these unidentified blips. After Nugent contacted several other stations to check their radars, they advised that they too had unidentified blips on their radars. One witness described the objects as, quote, a bright light hovering in the sky, which took off, zooming away at incredible speed. After speculation soared and the incident made headlines, it was only a matter of time before the U.S. Air Force claimed it was nothing more than temperature inversions, which had caused radar signals to bend and give off false returns. But for UFO enthusiasts, 1952 remains an important year in history. 4. International Space Station 2012 to Present Day as 2012 ended and 2013 began, numerous UFO sightings occurred around the world. Nothing new, right? But what about the unidentified objects seen in space near the International Space Station, a couple of hundred miles above the Earth? UFO enthusiasts have taken to uploading various videos showing images taken by NASA cameras of different shaped objects, some moving at speed and others very slow. During the Gemini 4 mission, pilot Jim McDivitt spotted an object that he described as a, quote, white cylinder with a pole sticking out of one corner. He proceeded to take two photos of it. His partner, Ed White, was unfortunately asleep at the time. McDivitt claims that it was an unknown but man-made piece of debris, while others argue that it was most likely the Titan 11 second stage of their craft. Sightings still occur to this day, some as recent as January 2017, when an object was spotted flying by the International Space Station moments before its live stream went dead. The UFO was seen going from small to large before vanishing after 25 seconds. This is just the latest in a series of NASA video footage showing UFOs before cutting out. 3. Randlesham Forest Incident, 1980 Several incidents have happened in and around the UK, but one of the most famous UFO events involved the sighting of several unexplained lights near an RAF base. In late December of 1980, there were a series of sightings of unexplained lights near Randlesham Forest in Suffolk, England. The most notable was witnessed by two on-duty servicemen. Jim Penniston, a sergeant based at the airbase, claims he saw and came into contact with a triangular spaceship that had landed in the nearby forest. As Jim Penniston touched the UFO, he was hit with a ton of binary code that became engraved in his mind. He wrote all of this down and later had the binary translated, and what occurred was very unexpected. The code was translated and included a list of spiritual and supernatural locations around the world, one of these being a location named High Brazil, which is a phantom island said to lie in the Atlantic Ocean west of Ireland. Irish myths describe it as cloaked in mist, except for one day every seven years when it becomes visible but still cannot be reached. 2. Roswell, 1947 in mid-1947, a UFO crashed at a ranch near Roswell, New Mexico. At first, the U.S. Army and Air Force confirmed that a UFO had indeed crashed, and news quickly spread. Following wide initial interest in the crashed flying disc, the U.S. military then stated that it was merely debris from an experimental high-altitude surveillance balloon from a classified program they called Mogul. 
With these claims being made, interest began to drop until the late 1970s when UFO enthusiasts began to promote numerous elaborate conspiracy theories, some claiming that several alien spacecrafts had crash landed and that the extraterrestrial occupants had been taken by the military who then engaged in a cover-up. Roswell is considered to be the single most well-known UFO incident in history, but are we any closer to what really happened? Nevertheless, there are still people who believe in this UFO theory, and hundreds of thousands of curious travelers visit Roswell and the crash site every year, hoping to find out the truth for themselves. 1. The Phoenix Lights, 1997 If you lived in Phoenix, Arizona on March 13, 1997, you were no doubt looking up to the skies and wondering what in the world was going on. In fact, strange lights were spotted over five different cities in the state of Arizona. First, there was a row of six lights seen over Phoenix, which was the first city to report the lights. It was then followed by another row of eight lights, and finally followed by nine connected lights. Witnesses claimed to have viewed a huge V-shaped, slow-moving, dark UFO. It was said that stars would disappear behind the UFO and reappear as it passed by, and that the object produced no sound. It recently emerged at the International UFO Congress event that some people even experienced memory loss after seeing the lights. Frances Barwood, the 1997 Phoenix City Councilwoman, launched an investigation into the event and was shocked to find over 700 witnesses she interviewed, quote, the government never interviewed even one. Ten Secret Societies That Run The World 10. Skulls and Bones Our first secret society was formed in 1832 at Yale University in America. It all came into play in a building commonly referred to as the Tomb and was the backlash to an argument between a number of debate teams at the university. It's said that William Taft, George Bush, and John Kerry were all members at some point. The members of the society are called Bonesmen, and they're known for abusing their power to climb the social ladders of the elite of America. The Skulls and Bones Society has been blamed for all sorts of things, such as the assassination of JFK and the nuclear bomb. 9. The Hawaiian League In the early 1800s, the Kingdom of Hawaii was formed. It managed independence for less than a century before it joined America. Its downfall brought about by the Hawaiian League. This society was formed by 200 rich European and American men who were not happy with King Kalakua, claiming he was extravagant. In fact, they were concerned at their lack of power over Hawaii. Lauren A. Thurston wrote a constitution in 1887 which formed the basis of the Hawaiian League. There are no surviving copies of that document. In under 12 months, the society had attracted 405 members, but it was not a harmonious group, as they could not agree on what they wanted. Some of the members sought to join America, while others hoped for an independent republic. They did all agree that they wanted to get rid of Queen Lilio Kulani, who had become the monarch two years previously. The Hawaiian League made friends with the Honolulu Rifles, a paramilitary group, who aided them to overthrow the queen in 1893. Hawaii became a republic for the next five years, after which it was made a territory of the United States. And Eleven years later, in 1959, it was named as the 50th state. 8. The Carbonari When Napoleon was defeated in 1814, Europe's borders were moved to accommodate for the territory which he had been a ruler of. A meeting between the UK, Austria, Russia, and Prussia was called at the Congress of Vienna to decide how it would work. Italy had been conquered by Napoleon in 1805, and so was divided up at the Congress, with Austria being given an area of the north and the remaining area being divided into small states. It was during this time of instability that the Carbonari was formed. However, where they came from remains unknown, as the society is as secret as they come. It's believed that they may have originated in France. The Carbonari are very much like the Freemasons, in that they take part in detailed and top-secret initiations and use symbols to uphold the secrecy of their activities. The hierarchy is similar, too. 
The Carbonari has around 60,000 members and, when formed, was the largest secret society in the country. There were a number at the time. The Carbonari can be credited with starting off the revolution in 1820, which resulted in bringing Italy together. The kingdom of the two Sicilies, Naples and Sicily, was ruled by King Ferdinand, and the Carbonari's revolution succeeded in ensuring Ferdinand relinquished his power. A constitution was then formed. Austria wasn't impressed and went to Naples to tear it up, but this angered the Italian people who revolted. Unity was won in 1861. 7. Ashoka's Nine Unknown Men Next we have one of the oldest societies, thought to have been started in 270 BC. Ashoka's Nine Unknown Men is the only known secret society in India and is thought to be the world's most powerful group. It was founded by King Ashoka of the Maurya dynasty who wanted to contain everything in the world and so started a secret society to do just that. Nine different men were chosen and each was given a specialist topic. Their task then was to develop and preserve information about their topic and prevent anyone from finding it out and using it for bad. The nine specialisms became nine books, which some people believe are still in existence and still being updated. The topics in the books are as follows. The first contains information about psychological warfare and propaganda, highly dangerous material should it fall into the wrong hands. It basically informs about how huge numbers of people can be influenced and effectively brainwashed. The next book is all about physiology, explaining human weakness and detailing how to kill with a single touch. The third is all about microbiology and biotechnology. The fourth book is about alchemy and the transmutation of metals. The fifth book deals with extraterrestrial communication, and the sixth book is concerned with the building of UFOs. The seventh book reveals information about cosmology and time travel, and the eighth one informs how the speed of light can be used to human advantage. The last book concerns itself with sociology, discussing human and societal evolution. It's thought that if these books are used for good, then they could change the world. But if they're used for evil, then it would lead to our downfall. King Ashoka was so worried that people couldn't be trusted with the information that he kept his society and his books very close to his chest. 6. The Bilderberg Group Next up, we have an elite group which hosts an annual gathering of around 150 of the world's most influential people. Think business, academia, media, and finance, as well as country leaders such as prime ministers and presidents. The Bilderberg Group was set up in 1954 in order to bring together these important people as one. The club is run by a group of representatives from 18 different countries, primarily from Europe and America, with each nation putting forth two people. Meetings are highly secretive and so have attracted negative theories about what goes on and what's influenced by them. There are claims that the Bilderberg Group was behind the Great Depression as well as many of the worst terrorist acts. Due to the influence of the people involved and the lack of transparency, the Bilderberg Group is one of the most dangerous groups in the world. 5. The German Tool Society It is commonly thought that the Tool Society founded in Munich in 1919 paved the way for Nazism, with certain important members of the Nazi party also members of the Tool Society. In fact, Adolf Hitler himself was seen as a visiting brother of the society. This, quite honestly, brutal society preached about the New World Order, and they believed the most efficient way of bringing about that order would be to eliminate whole groups of people in order to bring the population down. They practiced magic, black and sexual, and performed racist chants as well as holding supernatural exhibitions involving demons who they sought guidance from. One conspiracy theory to evolve about the Tool Society is that Hitler was treated for his sexual impotency with a demonic ritual, and it was this that turned him into the terrible dictator he proved to be. 4. Freemasons Here we have the infamous Freemasons, a super, super secret society based on brotherly relationships and taking the moral high ground. This benevolent group works to better the common man. It's not sympathetic to any religion, and it's thought that the Freemasons have a bit too much to do with world politics. In order to become a Freemason, you must ask a member belonging to a lodge closest to where you live. From there on out, you will be an associate until they deem you ready to join their group. 3. Sons of Liberty 
Next up, we have the Sons of Liberty, a society set up in 1765 as a backlash to the Stamp Act, among other programs set up by Parliament to earn money. The society began with local shopkeepers and tradesmen and was super secret. It played an important part in America gaining its independence from the UK. Two. The Fenian Brotherhood. Our next secret society was begun in America in 1858 by John O'Mahony and Michael Doheny. Made up of American and Irish revolutionaries, the ideology behind the Fenian Brotherhood was to thwart the British dominance in Ireland. The society's name comes from Fianna, a renowned group of Irish warriors. They were most known for their propaganda regarding social justice. 1. Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn Last up, we have a society that's said to be as occult as it's possible to be. The Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn was formed from a branch of the Freemasons and hails Aleister Crowley and William Yeats as its members. Its ideas are steeped in mysticism and all kinds of magic. The Golden Dawn system was based on hierarchy and initiation like the Masonic Lodges. However, women were admitted on an equal basis with men. The Golden Dawn was the first of three orders, although all three are often collectively referred to as the Golden Dawn. The first order taught esoteric philosophy based on the Hermetic Kabbalah and personal development through study and awareness of the four classical elements, as well as the basics of astrology, tarot divination, and geomancy. The second or inner order, the Rosé, Rubier, et Aurier Crucius, the Ruby Rose and Cross of Gold, taught magic, including scrying, astral travel, and alchemy. The third order was that of the secret chiefs, who were said to be highly skilled. They supposedly directed the activities of the lower two orders by spirit communication with the chiefs of the second order. Don't forget to like us. Thirteen Haunted Places in the World Thirteen The Whaley House, California Author DeTracy Regula states that, quote, Over the years, while dining across the street at the Old Town Mexican Cafe, I became accustomed to noticing that the shutters of the second-story windows of the Wally House would sometimes open while we ate dinner, long after the house was closed for the day. On a recent visit, I could feel the energy in several spots in the house, particularly in the courtroom, where I also smelled the faint scent of a cigar, supposedly Whaley's calling card. In the hallway, I smelled perfume, initially attributing that to the young woman acting as docent, but some later surreptitious sniffing in her direction as I talked to her about the house revealed her to be sent free. 12. Eastern State Penitentiary Opened in 1829, Eastern State is considered to be the first true penitentiary. Its revolutionary system of incarceration, dubbed the Pennsylvania system, originated and encouraged solitary confinement as a form of rehabilitation. In June of 2007, a well-known TV show by the name of Most Haunted went live to the penitentiary. Two of the crew members passed out while investigating the prison. They have claimed this building to be, quote, the most evil place they have ever been. 11. Borley Rectory, Essex, England Throughout the 1920s and 1930s, Borley Rectory is without a doubt one of the most famous haunted buildings in Britain. The wealth of sightings and experiences by independent witnesses suggests that although much of the phenomena can be explained in rational terms, a percentage remains which can still be seen as inexplicable at the present time. 10. The Myrtles Plantation, Louisiana Built in 1796 by General David Bradford, the Myrtles Plantation is known as one of America's most haunted homes, as it has been said that the plantation is supposedly home to at least 12 ghosts. It has also been reported that 10 murders occurred in the house, but historical records only indicate the murder of William Winter. Possibly the most well-known of the Myrtles' supposed ghosts, Chloe, was reportedly a slave owned by Clark and Sarah Woodruff. 9. Waverly Hills Sanatorium, Kentucky 
Waverly Hills Sanatorium, located in Louisville, Kentucky, opened in 1910 as a two-story hospital to accommodate 40 to 50 patients who have tuberculosis. In media, it has been said to be the most haunted hospital in the U.S. Shows such as Scariest Places on Earth, Celebrity Paranormal Project, and Ghost Hunters have all covered this hospital and all of its paranormal activities, including unexplained shadows, screams, and isolated cold spots. 8. Hotel Chelsea, New York A bohemian landmark, the Hotel Chelsea was built between 1883 and 1885. Although it was the home of countless artists, authors, poets, and musicians, it is perhaps best known as the place where Sex Pistols bassist Sid Vicious stabbed his girlfriend Nancy Spungen to death. Vicious himself died of a heroin overdose before the case could be brought to trial. Poet Dylan Thomas was staying at the Chelsea when he fell into his fatal coma. He died later in the hospital. But it's possible that Sid Vicious and Dylan Thomas never left the Hotel Chelsea after all. Their ghosts have been spotted wandering its halls, along with playwright Eugene O'Neill and novelist Thomas Wolfe. Other guests have reported all manner of paranormal phenomena, from cold air to phantom footsteps to lights that switch on and off at will. The hotel has since gone through renovation work. 7. Talbot Hotel, Oundle, England Fotheringay Castle was built circa 1100. It had a colorful history, being the birthplace of Richard III, whose remains were actually found last year beneath a parking lot of all places, as well as the place where Mary, Queen of Scots, was tried and beheaded. By the 1600s, the castle had fallen into ruin and was razed, but not before parts of it were salvaged. Most notable was the castle's oak staircase, which found its way into the nearby Talbot Hotel of Oundle, Northamptonshire. Legend has it that Mary walked down those very stairs on the way to her execution, leaving the mark of a crown on the wood from a ring she was wearing. Even though she has been dead for over 400 years, Mary has not slept easy. Her ghost has been seen walking down the staircase, furniture has been moved around, and a portrait of Mary has been known to leap from the wall. 6. Fairmont Banff Springs Hotels, Banff, Canada Oh come on, look at this place. It has haunted written all over it. It looks like a modern mashup between Dracula's castle and an insane asylum. Located high in the Canadian Rockies, the Fairmount Banff Springs Hotel calls to mind a beautiful medieval castle in the wilderness. The Fairmont management adamantly denies any ghostly activity, but stories abound. One spirit frequently witnessed is that of a bride allegedly killed in a tragic accident right before walking down the aisle. The other, far more whimsical tale, involves an elderly bellhop named Sam McCauley. Sam so adored the hotel that after he passed, he continued to work there. Guests report a white-haired bellhop helping them, only to vanish before they have a chance to tip him. 5. The White House, Washington, D.C. Yet another world-famous building on the list that you wouldn't think would be on this list. The White House is actually notorious for being haunted. President Harrison is said to be heard rummaging around in the attic of the White House, and President Andrew Jackson is thought to haunt his White House bedroom. The most frequently cited presidential ghost has been that of Abraham Lincoln. Eleanor Roosevelt once stated she believed she felt the presence of Lincoln watching her as she worked in the Lincoln bedroom. Also, during the Roosevelt administration, a young clerk claimed to have actually seen the ghost of Lincoln sitting on a bed, pulling off his boots. 4. Edinburgh Castle, Edinburgh, Scotland So, alone, Edinburgh has been said to be the most haunted city in all of Europe, and the most haunted spot has been said to be Edinburgh Castle. On various occasions, visitors to the castle have reported a phantom piper, a headless drummer, the spirit of French prisoners from the Seven Years' War, and colonial prisoners from the American Revolutionary War, even the ghost of a dog wandering in the grounds Dog Cemetery. 3. The Queen Mary, California Now transformed into a hotel, the RMS Queen Mary is an ocean liner that used to sail the North Atlantic Ocean from 1936 to 1967, before it was purchased by the city of Long Beach, California. The most haunted area of the ship is the engine room, where a 17-year-old sailor was crushed to death trying to escape a fire. Knocking and banging on the pipes around the door has been heard and recorded by numerous people. In what is now the front desk area of the hotel, visitors have seen the ghost of a lady in white. 
Ghosts of children are also said to haunt the ship's pool. 2. Rainham Hall, Norfolk, England For 300 years, Rainham Hall in Norfolk, England has been the seat of the Townshend family. The hall gave its name to the area, known as East Rainham, and is reported to be haunted, providing the scene for possibly the most famous ghost photo of all time, which shows a brown lady descending down the stairs, with the image itself having a very paranormal feel to the photo. However, there have been no signs of paranormal activity in the building since. 1. The Tower of London Probably one of the most iconic locations in London, the Tower of London is a historic monument that sits on the north bank of the River Thames. Well, it's believed to be haunted, as people have claimed to have seen the spirit of Anne Boleyn, one of the wives of Henry VIII, who was also beheaded in the tower in 1536. Her ghost has been spotted on many occasions, sometimes carrying her head on Tower Green and in the Tower Chapel Royal. Number 10. The Murder of Julia Wallace Julia Wallace was a British housewife who lived at 29 Wolverton Street in Liverpool. On January 19, 1931, her husband William went to the local chess club for a regular game. When he arrived, he was told a message was left for him by a man named Qualtro, a name William didn't recognize, telling him to go to 25 Men Love Gardens East. The next day, William did just that, leaving his wife at home. He ultimately discovered it was a phony address, having spent nearly an hour wandering up and down the road. Despaired, William went home, where he was shocked to discover his wife's bloody, beaten corpse lying in their parlor. Police arrested William about two weeks later, convinced he had left himself a phony message, as the call came from a box only a few hundred yards from his chess club. Even though most of the evidence against him was circumstantial, William was convicted and sentenced to death. William's case was brought up to the Court of Criminal Appeal, which rarely overturned jury decisions. However, the court decided this case warranted it, and William was set free. To this day, no other person has been charged with the crime, and it remains unsolved. Number 9. The Big Grey Man of Ben McDewey. Known in Scotland as Amphir Lyath Moore, the Big Grey Man of Ben McDewey is a cryptid, similar to the Yeti or Bigfoot. He is said to be found on Ben McDewey, the largest peak in the Cairngorm Mountains, and it first became more than a local legend in 1889, when Professor Norman Colley allegedly saw it. Though he technically didn't see the grey man, he was quoted as saying, I heard something else other than my own footsteps. For every few steps I took I heard a crunch, and then another crunch, as if someone was walking after me, but taking footsteps three or four times the length of my own. Various other accounts have come from a number of people since then, including Peter Densham, a member of the airplane rescue team for Ben McDewey. Naturalist and mountaineer Alexander Tunian also claimed to have seen the grey man, firing three shots from his pistol at a figure which charged at him through the mist. A Brock Inspector, a phenomenon where an observer's shadow is cast upon the surfaces of clouds opposite the sun, has been claimed to be the cause of these so-called sightings, although that doesn't explain the sound of an extra pair of footsteps. Number 8. The Hesdalen Lights. Sightings of this particular phenomenon go back as far as 1811 and occur in the Hesdalen Valley, which is in the middle of Norway. However, in the early 1980s, the lights became much more frequent, with a peak of nearly 20 separate reports each week. Since then, the sightings have decreased in frequency, with observations numbering 10-20 per year. Normally, the lights are either bright white or yellow and hover above the ground. Various scientific studies have been commissioned to find out the source behind the lights, but no conclusive explanation has been found. Studies meant to refute some of the findings have pointed out a variety of logical explanations, including car headlights and mirages, though they admit that such things don't necessarily explain every occurrence. Number 7. The Great Amherst Mystery. In the latter half of the 19th century, in a little town called Amherst in Nova Scotia, a woman named Esther Cox was beset by what she claimed were poltergeists. Esther lived in a house with her sister and her family. 
after Esther had been nearly killed by a male friend of hers, who may have suffered a psychotic break, her house began to be haunted. After spending some time at another sister's house in a nearby province, because of her failing health, Esther returned to Amherst, whereupon the hauntings began again. After the poltergeists threatened to burn down the house, Esther moved in with another family, whose house became haunted as well. Part-time actor Walter Hubble moved in with Esther, as he was also an occasional paranormal investigator. He investigated the house for a number of weeks, eventually writing a popular book about his experiences, in which he claimed to have seen floating objects as well as attacks on Esther by unseen forces. To date, no explanation has been given, though some who have investigated the stories believe it was all a hoax by Esther. Number 6. The Disappearance of Benjamin Bathurst. Benjamin Bathurst was a 19th century diplomat for Britain, relatively young and extremely proficient in his job, a man with seemingly limitless potential. In 1809, after conducting a diplomatic mission to Austria, he headed home, forced to take a more perilous route to avoid the French. Armed to the teeth, including two pistols he always kept on his person, Bathurst decided to travel through Germany under the assumed name of Koch. On November 25, Bathurst and his German aide, her Krauss, stopped at the small town of Pearlberg, resting a while, before continuing their journey. When the time had come to leave the inn at which they had stopped, Bathurst walked out the door, with Krauss allegedly following afterward, only seconds behind. However, when Krauss got outside, Bathurst was gone, never to be seen again. Krauss himself eventually made it to England, weeks later, and told British officials of Bathurst's disappearance. A rather large investigation was undertaken, with Bathurst's wife herself spending a lot of money to have dogs scour the area surrounding Pearlberg, but Bathurst was never found. Various articles of his clothing were discovered in the nearby area, but his body remained lost. The prevailing opinion is that he was either arrested by the French and later killed in prison, or was simply another victim of the bandits who made traveling through Europe during the 19th century a risky proposition. Number 5. The Lost Sublet Mine. The Guadalupe Mountains, located in West Texas and southeastern New Mexico, are said to be home to some of the richest gold mines in the world, a fact alleged by the famous Apache Geronimo. Ben Sublet, an old miner who lived during the 19th century, was supposed to have found a vein of gold, one so valuable he could mine $10,000 worth of gold in a week. Unfortunately, the only evidence of his mine is a single hole in the ground, which is not much bigger than a man. Long seen as a drunk and a liar, Sublet came into his local tavern one night, throwing down a handful of nuggets and proclaiming drinks were on him. A number of unsuccessful efforts were made to pry the secret from him, and attempts were made to follow him to his secret mine, but they were met with the business end of his rifle. Even when Sublet's young son asked where the gold was located, Sublet told him to find it himself, like his father did. To this day, no one knows where the mine is located, and scientists don't believe large gold veins are even located in the Guadalupe Mountains. Number 4. The Aurora Incident. Aurora is a sleepy town in Texas, just northwest of Dallas, but it has one rather large claim to fame. On April 19, 1897, a cigar-shaped flying object, which had been spotted a number of times in the weeks prior, crashed near the village, killing its pilot. In addition, the local graveyard claims to have the corpse buried somewhere in its grounds, though they refuse to allow it to be exhumed. To make matters worse, the alien's burial site is no longer marked, as its gravestone was stolen in the 1970s, when the local legend entered the national consciousness and the media descended on the small town. The story goes that the UFO crashed into a windmill, exploding into a mass of little pieces, leaving the pilot's remains badly disfigured. The body was given a Christian burial, and the leftover debris were tossed into a local well. The most likely explanation is that a couple of drunks wanted to cover up the fact they burned down a windmill, which was located on the town judge's land. Number 3. The Black Mausoleum. Located in Greyfriars Kirkyard, a cemetery located in Edinburgh, Scotland, the Black Mausoleum is the resting place of Sir George Mackenzie. He was Lord Advocate for Charles II, responsible for persecuting the Covenanters, a group of Presbyterians. Since he was the reason for hundreds of deaths, while they were imprisoned, Mackenzie earned the name Bloody Mackenzie. 
Upon his death in 1691, he was buried in Greyfriars Kirkyard, and nothing notable happened for centuries. However, beginning in 1999, sightings of a poltergeist, as well as a number of cold spots and visible burns and bruises, have been claimed by visitors to the graveyard. Nearly 450 witnesses have come forward, with over 100 having apparently fainted while on the grounds. Richard Felix, of the British paranormal documentary show Most Haunted, has called it one of the most convincing supernatural cases of all time. Mackenzie's grave was eventually sealed up, but the attacks kept happening. To date, no explanation has been proven, with psychosomatic and hysterical reactions cited as the most likely culprit. Number 2. The Hornet Spook Light. With sightings dating back as far as 1866, the Hornet Spook Light, also known by a number of different names, has made its home in a place known as the Devil's Promenade in northeast Oklahoma. Normally said to be an orange ball of light which bobs along a 6.4-kilometer stretch of gravel road, legend says that it was first seen by Native Americans who walked the Trail of Tears. Nobody has ever suffered adverse effects from the light. It simply appears in the sky, wanders aimlessly, bobbing and weaving at great speed, and then it's gone. The most popular explanation is that the hornet spook light is a will-o'-the-wisp, the name for the light given off when wood and other organic compounds decay. Another leading reason is rather simple, scientists say that it may simply be the refracted headlights of nearby drivers. However, this doesn't explain the sightings before the invention of the automobile. Number 1. The Murder of Geely Robble. Angela Geely Robble was a young woman who grew up in Germany in the early 20th century. Her life was cut short when she allegedly committed suicide on September 18, 1931. The gun she used belonged to her half-uncle and rumored lover, Adolf Hitler. Known as Uncle Alfie to his niece, Hitler entranced the young woman with his celebrity since they first became involved just as the Nazis were rising to power. Robble traveled with the Führer all over the countryside, eventually moving into Hitler's mansion in Munich as a housekeeper. During their time together, Hitler exalted his niece as a paragon for all Aryan women, though some didn't see her that way. One rival called her an empty-headed little slut who manipulated Hitler. Reports of the pair fighting the night before her death were said to have centered on Robble's wish to travel to Vienna to get engaged to another man. After her suicide, Hitler's people put forth the explanation that Robble had shot herself because she was nervous about an upcoming music recital, which was widely discredited. No note was ever discovered, and there were reportedly numerous injuries found on Robble's body, including a broken nose. A firestorm of controversy erupted, but was quickly silenced by the Nazis' political influence as well as their threats of litigation. Nevertheless, rumors dogged Hitler for years that he had in fact murdered Robble. A journalist who was investigating the circumstances surrounding her suicide was arrested by the Nazis just before he was to publish his findings. He was executed months later at Dachau. With that last death, any investigations into the truth of the matter were abandoned, and we may never know what truly happened to Geely Robble. Carl Lagerfeld once said, What I like about photographs is that they capture a moment that's gone forever, impossible to reproduce. He is correct in that statement. Mr. Mysterious here, and in old times, there were no cameras, no instantaneous snapshots in order to document events. After centuries of art-based detailing, Johann Zahn would design the first camera in 1685. The first photograph was clicked by Joseph Nishvor Nipchi in the year 1814, and we never looked back. However, some photos capture the darkness of our reality, shining a momentary light in order to seal an image of dread for years to come. So today, we'll be peering upon five photographs with dark and mysterious backstories. Viewer discretion advised. The last photo. Can you imagine how hard it would be for a girl to pose for what she can only assume to be her last photo, taken by a killer? 
You can see how afraid the girl is in this photograph. This girl, 14-year-old Regina K. Walters, was kidnapped, raped, and murdered by American serial killer Robert Ben Rhodes. Rhodes had taken the photo of his last known victim, Regina, moments before killing her in an abandoned barn in Illinois. Rhodes was a truck driver by profession. He converted the sleeper cab into his own personal torture chamber. Rhodes is believed to have first killed in November of 1989. Rhodes' first confirmed victims were Candace Walsh and her husband, Douglas Zazowski, in 1990. A month after Walsh's death, the thrill for blood and dominance over another's life would become too much. His next victims were Regina K. Walters and her boyfriend, Ricky Lee Jones. They had left their parents' home in Pasadena, Texas, when Rhodes kidnapped the two of them. And as the two had been living more or less alone, no one was around to report the disappearance. Ricky Lee was not useful for him, so Rhodes would kill and dispose of him early off. Wanting to torture Walters, Rhodes would keep the young girl for a long period. Just before her death, Robert Ben Rhodes took his photo, making her change into the dress and heels she is wearing in that photo, and he took her out to an abandoned barn in Illinois and chopped her hair. Photos were seized during a search of the home of Rhodes when he was later arrested. Later, the body of her boyfriend, Ricky Lee Jones, was found on March 3, 1991, in Lamar County, Mississippi. Rhodes was convicted of the first-degree murder of Regina K. Walters and sentenced to life without parole. Signing Autographs for a Killer We all want to be a star, hoping one day to be asked for our autograph by adoring fans. John Lennon was a prime example of a superstar who had to deal with just that. One day, as Lennon was exiting his New York apartment, a man asked him to sign a record. Lennon signs the record. Unannounced to him, this same man would be the one to fatally shoot the performer just a few hours later. Yes, the man was none other than Mark Chapman. Chapman had been a big Beatles fan and played guitar himself, but turned against John Lennon after becoming a Christian. Lennon commented that the Beatles were, quote, more popular than Jesus, causing Chapman to grow furious over the comment. According to Chapman, there should be nobody more popular than the Savior Jesus Christ. Chapman was unable to handle the fact that Lennon told his fans to imagine no possessions, and there he was, with millions of dollars, and yachts, and farms, and country estates, laughing at people like him, who had believed the lies and bought the records and built a big part of their lives around his music. Chapman had a further list of people in mind whom he hated, but Lennon seemed to be the easiest to eliminate. Heading to New York many times, Chapman was somehow not able to kill him. However, on December 8, 1980, Chapman left his room at the Sheraton Hotel in New York. He spent most of the day near the entrance to the Dakota apartment building where Lennon and wife, Yoko Ono, lived. Around 5 p.m., Lennon and Ono left the Dakota for a recording session at Record Plant Studios. This is when Chapman would ask for him to sign a copy of his album, and when photographer Paul Gorish would take the photo of Lennon signing the autograph. Chapman would fire five shots from a 38 Special revolver as the two would return to their apartment later in the evening. Four of the bullets hit Lennon in the back and the left shoulder. Chapman stayed at the scene, reading The Catcher in the Rye until the police arrived. Lennon was pronounced dead by doctors at 11.07 p.m. Chapman was sentenced to a prison term of 20 years to life with a stipulation that mental health treatment be provided. The People's Temple, Jonestown Massacre. More than 900 members of the People's Temple lost their lives at the religious place in the jungles of Guyana on the 18th of November, 1978, 
reporting as a mass suicide. The massacre took place at Jonestown, which is named after the church's leader, Reverend Jim Jones. This all happened because of one man. Jim Jones, who had founded the People's Temple in Indiana in the 1950s and relocated his congregation to California in the 1960s. He called himself a Messiah of the People's Temple and he promised his followers utopia if they were to follow him. Jones bought land in Guyana to develop into a new home for himself and his followers in 1974. Jonestown was the informal name for the People's Temple Agricultural Project formed by the People's Temple in northwestern Guyana. There were roughly a thousand followers who were also living with him there. He ran the site like a prison camp as his followers received little food and were not given permission to leave the site. Armed guards stood at the compound's perimeter to make sure that no one could attempt to flee. Jones was not able to stop the heat rising against him, however, as former People's Temple members were publicly speaking out against Jim Jones and were forcing the government to take legal action against the so-called spiritual leader. In November of 1978, Leo J. Ryan, a congressman from California, toured Jonestown with a television crew to investigate Jonestown for himself. The congressman told the followers that anyone who wanted to leave the Jonestown compound could leave with him. Some members supported this decision. Those members and the rest of the visitors were driven to an airstrip in Port Kaituma. There, they were attacked by People's Temple gunmen sent by Jones. Five people were killed in that shooting, including Congressman Ryan. Jones was completely aware of the fact that it had become impossible for him to live in free air, so he called an assembly and launched revolutionary suicide campaigns. A 44-minute cassette tape, known as the Death Tape, recorded part of the assembly which Jones called for. Before the meeting, he had prepared a large metal tub with grape flavor aid, poisoned with Valium, chloral hydrate, cyanide, and Finnergan. To encourage his followers to drink cups of this poisonous beverage, he told them, Die with a degree of dignity. Lay down your life with dignity. Don't lay down with tears and agony. The followers who were driven away by his speech and thought drank the lethal beverage, and others who refused to drink were forced to drink it by armed guards. In all, more than 900 people died in Jonestown, 276 of them being children. Jones chose a different way to end his life, either shooting himself in the head or having someone else do it. The self-proclaimed Messiah was found dead, lying next to his chair between two other bodies, his head cushioned by a pillow. In this photo, you can see the dead bodies of the followers lying on the land, who died because of drinking that lethal beverage. The Killer Son Can you imagine a son brutally killing his parents with a hammer during a late night house party? The scene which is difficult to imagine is all too real. Tyler Hadley, son of Blake and Mary Jo Hadley, would kill his parents on July 16, 2011 in Port St. Lucie, Florida. Tyler Hadley was an introverted boy living with his parents, having moved to Port St. Lucie from Fort Lauderdale in 1987. His father worked as a watch engineer in the St. Lucie nuclear power plant, while his mother was an elementary school teacher. Tyler also had an older brother studying in college in North Carolina. Tyler was close with his parents. He enjoyed playing football and taking part in swimming. But all of the problems started when he took admission in Port St. Lucie High School, in which his behavior would plummet immensely, being accused of burglary in 2010, and also setting a fire in a nearby park. He was not of sound mind at this point in his life, and it did not help that Tyler was not a popular student at his school. So to combat this, Tyler would throw a big party at his house and invite the entire school. But his parents did not give him permission to do that. In retaliation, Tyler decided to kill them. 
Shortly before 5 p.m. on July 16, 2011, Tyler took his parents' cell phones so they could not contact anyone. He took three pills of ecstasy and then went to his parents' room. He stood behind his mother while she was working at a computer and then beat her to death with a hammer. Hearing his wife's screams, Blake rushed to the scene and saw Tyler. After staring at each other for several minutes, Tyler would beat his father to death as well. He spent the next three hours cleaning up the blood before hosting the party. He hid their bodies in the master bedroom, and by midnight, a hundred kids were in the Hadley house drinking, making out, and smoking pot. Tyler confided in Michael, his childhood friend at the party, and confessed to having killed his parents. But Michael didn't believe him. Only after seeing the dead bodies would Michael believe his friend's story. He did so about three hours later, resulting in Tyler's arrest. Tyler was 17 at the time of the murder and could not be sentenced to death by Florida law. In 2014, he was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. In this photo, you can see Tyler on the right with his friend partying and looking like any other normal teen on that gruesome night. Tariska's Home This photo was taken by David Seymour in a home for emotionally disturbed children located in Warsaw, 1948. Tariska was a small girl at the home and she was asked to draw her house and family. Unlike other normal children, she was not able to draw a normal home. She drew wavering chicken track lines crisscrossing one another. She had done this because of her memory of the terror and fear during World War II. Just like other children in the home, she grew up inside a concentration camp. Most children who survived the Holocaust came out from hiding places, attics and cellars, caves and forests, convents and monasteries, and homes ranging from huts to castles. When the war in Europe ended in May of 1945, more than one million, and perhaps as many as 1.5 million, Jewish children were dead. When the camp was liberated on January 27, 1945, Soviet troops found just 451 Jewish children among the 9,000 surviving prisoners. Liberation for children was not necessarily liberating because most parents did not come forward for them. Children waited for years until their hope had died. The youngest survivors did not know their names, country of origin, or even their first language. Children were dragged from Europe and resettled in different nations like England, Israel, the United States, Canada, Australia, and South Africa. No one truly knows where Tariska is while she creates her drawings, but this photo has become a symbol of the horrors of the atrocities committed in one of the darkest periods in human history. If you find it mysterious, then like this video and also be sure to subscribe because you really don't want to miss what is coming next. As always, thank you for watching. Conspiracy theorists are often mocked and their conspiracy theories are treated like jokes. I do agree that some conspiracy theories are just flat out insane, but that doesn't mean every conspiracy theory is a joke. As it happened in these cases, sometimes conspiracy theorists are the only ones seeing the truth. So today I'm sharing with you five conspiracy theories that turned out to be true. Make sure you stay for number one, because it is the most scandalous operation run by any government. Project MKUltra One of the most shocking conspiracy theories that turned out to be true was a CIA program called MKUltra, 
the CIA's mind control program. MKUltra was the code name given to an illegal program of experiments done on human subjects, designed and undertaken by the United States Central Intelligence Agency, or the CIA. The program was active between the 1950s and 1973 and used U.S. and Canadian citizens as its test subjects. During the program, the CIA established front companies to work with more than 80 institutions, including 44 colleges and universities, as well as hospitals, prisons, and pharmaceutical companies. With these partnerships in place, the agency ran experiments on subjects using drugs, hypnosis, sensory deprivation, isolation, verbal and sexual abuse, as well as various forms of torture. In December 1974, the New York Times alleged that the CIA had conducted illegal domestic activities, including experiments on U.S. citizens during the 1960s. That report prompted investigations by the U.S. Congress in the form of the Church Committee and by a presidential commission known as the Rockefeller Commission that looked into domestic activities of the CIA, the FBI, and intelligence-related agencies of the military. In 1975, Congressional Church Committee reports and the Presidential Rockefeller Commission report revealed to the public for the first time that the CIA and Department of Defense had conducted experiments on both unwitting and cognizant human subjects. In 1973, the CIA Director Richard Helms ordered to destroy all MKUltra files. As per his order, most CIA documents regarding the project were destroyed making a full investigation of MKUltra impossible. But a cache of some 20,000 documents survived Helm's purge, as they had been incorrectly stored in a financial records building and were discovered following the FOIA request in 1977. At least two American deaths can be attributed to this program, according to the Church Committee but because of the CIA's purposeful destruction of most records and the uncontrolled nature of the experiment, the full impact of MKUltra experiments, including deaths, may never be known. However, there are many speculations about MKUltra. Lawrence Teeter, attorney for convicted assassin Sir Han, believed that his client was under the influence of hypnosis when he fired his weapon at Robert F. Kennedy in 1968. Teeter linked the CIA's MKUltra program to mind control techniques that he claimed were used to control Sir Han. Although the CIA insists that MKUltra type experiments have been abandoned, some CIA observers say there is little reason to believe it does not continue today under a different set of acronyms. The Gulf of Tonkin Incident On the night of August 4, 1964, at the height of the tensions between the U.S. and North Vietnam, the Communist Navy made the bold decision to attack two American destroyers, the USS Turner Joy and the USS Maddox. The American ships were outside North Vietnamese territory when they radioed that they were being attacked by three North Vietnamese torpedo boats. Hours after the first radio message from the Maddox, President Lyndon Johnson reported that at least two of the enemy boats were sunk, and American media outlets backed up that story in numerous articles. President Lyndon B. Johnson promptly drafted the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, which became his administration's legal justification for military involvement in Vietnam. But conspiracy theorists thought it looked a lot like a false flag attack. They speculate that the events had been concocted by the U.S. government and military to push forward with plans to expand the war. And they were right. In 1965, President Johnson admitted that for all he knew, the U.S. Navy was shooting whales out there. In 2005, a NSA report on the records from the night of the Gulf of the Tonkin incident concluded that the event was blown out of proportion on purpose which is pretty significant since the NSA was the only one who did the initial blowing. According to the report, quote, It is not simply that there is a different story as to what happened. It is that no attack happened that night, and American officials knew it almost immediately. The first Gulf War was sold by a public relations company. 
In 1990, when the Iraqi military invaded the sovereign nation of Kuwait, it was far from a foregone conclusion that America should intervene, as most Americans had never heard of Kuwait. But when 15-year-old Nayira took stand to testify about witnessing Iraqi soldiers leaving babies to die in Kuwait, she instantly grabbed the heartstrings of Americans who threw their support behind America's involvement in the Gulf War. She said in tears, While I was there, I saw the Iraqi soldiers come into the hospital with guns. They took the babies out of incubators, and they took the incubators and left these children to die on the cold floor. It was horrifying. Her testimony was used by the President and U.S. Senators as evidence for the need to increase America's presence in the war. But two years later, in 1992, John MacArthur of the New York Times discovered Nayira was the daughter of Kuwaiti ambassador in the U.S. and that her story had been utterly fabricated. And the CIA was responsible for organizing the funds and advertisements to disseminate Nayira's testimony. Her testimony had been organized as part of a free Kuwait public relations campaign. She had been coached to give her false testimony by public relations company Hill and Knowlton's vice president. The scandal showed that the CIA helped few powers that wanted Americans in the war with Iraq for their own purpose, which we all know was oil. Operation North Woods During the Cold War, Communist Cuba under its leader Fidel Castro was a problem for the United States. The U.S. tried to oust Castro during the Bay of Pigs invasion of 1961, but the operation failed. So the generals came up with an unbelievable plan called Operation North Woods. The Joint Chiefs of Staff of the U.S. military drew up and approved plans to create acts of terrorism on U.S. soil in order to sway the American public into supporting war against Cuba. The plans included innocent Americans being shot dead on the streets, boats carrying refugees fleeing to Cuba and being sunk on the high seas, a wave of violent terrorism to be launched in Washington, D.C., Miami, and elsewhere, and planes being hijacked. It was also planned to fabricate evidence that would implicate Fidel Castro and Cuban refugees as being behind the attacks. Fortunately, President Kennedy rejected the plan. For years, there were rumors about the existence of Operation North Woods, but it was generally disregarded as a conspiracy theory. Then, in 1997, the John F. Kennedy Assassination Records Review Board declassified over 1,500 pages of documents. In these documents were the record of Operation Northwoods and proof that it wasn't a conspiracy at all. Theorists claimed that the military may have had a hand in Kennedy's assassination because of his blistering rebuke of the Joint Chiefs. However, there is no proof of it. Operation Mockingbird In the late 1940s, the CIA launched a top-secret project called Operation Mockingbird. This operation went on for nearly three decades. Their goal was to buy influence and control along in major media outlets. They also planned to put journalists and reporters directly on the CIA payroll, which some claim is ongoing to this day. The architects of this plan were Frank Wisner, Alan Dules, Richard Helms, and Philip Graham, the publisher of the Washington Post who planned to enlist American news organizations and journalists to basically become spies and propagandists. As it developed, it also worked to influence foreign media and political campaigns in addition to activities by other operating units of the CIA. In 1966, Ramparts magazine published an article revealing that the Nation's Student Association was funded by the CIA. This well exposed the wide system of anti-communist front organizations in Europe, Asia, and South America. The United States Congress investigated the allegations and published a report in 1976. The report says, The CIA currently maintains a network of several hundred foreign individuals around the world who provide intelligence for the CIA, and at times attempt to influence opinion through the use of covert propaganda. These individuals provide the CIA with direct access to a large number of newspapers and periodicals, scores of press services and news agencies, radio and television stations, 
commercial and book publishers, and other foreign media outlets. After this report, George H.W. Bush, the director of the CIA, announced a new apology which says, The CIA will not enter into any paid or contract relationship with any full-time or part-time news correspondent. Accredited by a U.S. news service, newspaper, periodical, radio or television network or station. He added that the CIA would continue to welcome the voluntary unpaid cooperation of journalists. David Bruce, appointed by Dwight Eisenhower to investigate this covert propaganda, stated that Mockingbird is responsible for over 50 of internal politics over the last half of the 20th century. Another shocking thing was, Mockingbird was responsible for $300,000 of the funding in the 1954 Animal Farm cartoon. They asked Walt Disney if he wanted to make the film, and he balked at the prospect. He was anti-communist, but the novel does not end happily, and Disney wanted nothing to do with such a story. If you found any of these mysterious, then like the video, and be sure to subscribe, because you really don't want to miss what's next. And as always, thank you for watching. There's around 3,000 human-made satellites in working order around Earth. However, if the debris of old and damaged satellites are taken into account, the number increases dramatically. Ever since the Soviet Union launched the very first artificial satellite into orbit in 1957, various countries around the world have sought to compete, and satellites today are used for communication, navigation and exploration. Satellites are often visible passing overhead as the sunlight reflects back towards the Earth. One of them is impossible to miss, the largest satellite currently in orbit, the International Space Station. However, these satellites are relatively unexciting in comparison to the mystery surrounding one very old dark satellite. The Black Knight satellite is claimed by some conspiracy theorists to be an object approximately 13,000 years old of extraterrestrial origin orbiting Earth in near polar orbit. It's been identified as an alien satellite, and even though there are images of this object, many remain skeptical about its purpose and origin. The discovery of the Black Knight satellite is perhaps one of the most famous objects to orbit our planet. This artificial satellite has caused major media interest since the late 50s, and it's become one of the most talked about objects in space. First thought to be a Russian spy satellite, the Black Knight has gripped the interest of millions worldwide. According to monitoring agencies around the world, the Black Knight has been transmitting radio signals for over 50 years now. The USA and the Soviet Union have shown particular interest in this unidentified space object. Since its discovery, this satellite has interested countries such as Sweden and enthusiasts worldwide. One of them is a ham radio operator who apparently decoded a series of signals received from the UFO satellite, and interpreted it as a star chart centered on the Epsilon Boot star system, and that the Black Knight originated from this system 13,000 years ago. The first apparent part of this story begins with signals heard by Nikola Tesla, a brilliant inventor who spent most of his career in the USA. He was an electrical engineer and produced works which explored the idea of radio and wireless transmissions. In 1899, he reportedly intercepted a signal unlike any of the natural sources from Earth such as electrical storms that he'd already investigated in his experiments. Instead, he announced that regular signals must be coming from an intelligent outside source, potentially inhabitants of Mars. Tesla never claimed to have heard signals from a satellite orbiting Earth, Today, there are those who say he was listening to a transmission from an orbiting satellite of unknown origin, later called by some the Black Knight. In 1957, Dr. Louis Korolos of the Communications Ministry in Venezuela photographed it while taking pictures of Sputnik 2 as it passed over Caracas. The strange thing was that unlike the Sputnik 1 and 2, the Black Knight satellite orbited Earth from east to west, Sputnik 1 and 2 orbited west to east using Earth's natural rotation to maintain orbit. The story of the Black Knight made its media debut in the 1940s. The St. Louis Dispatch and the San Francisco Examiner wrote about the satellite on May 14th, 1954. The Time magazine wrote about it on the 7th of March, 1960. 
A few years later, the Black Knight seemed to have made another appearance when American newspapers reported in 1960 that there was an unusual object in polar orbit. By then, both superpowers had satellites in equatorial orbit, but polar orbit meant the satellite could see every part of the Earth, yet neither country admitted owning it. In the 1960s, the Black Knight was located once again in polar orbit. Astronomers and scientists calculated the object's weight to be over 10 tons, which would be at that time the heaviest artificial satellite to orbit our planet. The Black Knight's orbit was unlike any other object orbiting Earth, as it was moving twice as fast when compared to any other man-made spacecraft. There's also several reports that the Grumman Aircraft Corporation gave much importance to this mysterious satellite. On September the 3rd, 1960, seven months after the satellite was first detected by radar, a tracking camera at Grumman Aircraft Corporation's Long Island factory took a photograph of the Black Knight. At that point, people all over the world started identifying the object in the sky, which could be seen as a red light moving at higher speed compared to other satellites in an east-to-west orbit. The Grumman Aircraft Corporation formed a committee to study the data received from the observations made, but nothing was made public. Any story or conspiracy theory to have credibility, it always helps to get someone high profile on board. In the case of the Black Knight, Project Mercury astronaut Gordon Cooper is a prime example. Cooper announced seeing many UFOs throughout his career. Cooper joined the Air Force in 1949, with his first flight assignment in Germany. There he says for several days in a row in 1951, he and his fellow pilots sighted metallic saucer-shaped vehicles. In an interview in 1980, he said that he believed these crafts to come from a technologically advanced civilization. He went on to say, from my association with aircraft and spacecraft, I think I have a pretty good idea of what everyone on this planet has and their performance capabilities, and I'm sure some of the UFOs are not from anywhere on Earth. Another UFO incident Cooper was involved in while in the Air Force took place at Edwards Air Force Base in California in 1957. There he was a test pilot and project manager. On May the 3rd, he had a crew setting up a camera system on a dry lake bed for filming rocket launches. Cooper was not present during the incident. However, two of his crew members described seeing a saucer-like craft hover over them and land 50 yards away. The craft extended three landing gears from its underside and settled on the lake bed in complete silence. As the men approached the craft, it took off, again emitting no noise. So when it was claimed that Gordon Cooper saw green lights belonging to the Black Knight on his pioneering Mercury mission into Earth's orbit, with ground control radar also picking up something inexplicable, it's often believed to be true. The crew of Space Shuttle Orbiter Endeavour photographed an unusual object in low Earth orbit but not polar orbit. These images are often labelled as the most definitive proof of this satellite. However, on more careful analysis, this strange structure seems more like a piece of space debris. In actual fact, this black object is probably a thermal blanket that become dislodged during an EVA. Mission STS-88 was the first American mission to begin construction on the International Space Station. The Russians had already placed the Zara module in orbit, so this mission was to connect Zara to the American Unity module. The crew achieved all objectives of their mission, including installing handrails and testing a safety device to prevent astronauts drifting into space should they become detached. However, there were a few hitches along the way. Initial alignment of the modules did not quite work, so as the shutter's robotic arm loosened its grip to try again, several items floated away, including the thermal blanket covering which is the mysterious looking image captured. This isn't the only strange thing that has been witnessed in space. In July 1984, Russian cosmonauts aboard the space station Soyuz 7 were on day 155 of their mission. This was also the day the group reported strange lights and beings. According to Commander Oleg Atkov and cosmonaut Vladimir Sololyov, the space station was completely bathed in a mesmerizing orange light. It appeared to enter from outside the space station. For a short period of time, the orange light was so bright that it blinded the crew. When their vision returned, each one looked out the porthole for the source of the light, looking specifically for a possible explosion. They knew the Soyuz 7 had suffered previous fires, but what the crew saw was more incomprehensible than the orange light. All of the cosmonauts reported seeing the faces of seven angels who were hovering just outside the space station. They told ground control they were humanoid in appearance, having faces and bodies that looked human but also having wings and halos. These beings kept peace with the space station for 10 minutes before vanishing. On day 167, the crew was then joined by another team of three from the Solu T-12 spacecraft. Shortly after joining them, the Solu 7 was once again bathed in a warm orange light. 
They immediately looked out the portholes and once again were joined by angelic beings. According to the cosmonauts, they were the size of an airliner. This incident was deemed top secret by the old Soviet Union, and the crew was cautioned not to speak of the event publicly. All the cosmonauts reported seeing a smiling angel. While some may dismiss the incident as fatigue due to an extended stay in space, there was more than one crew that saw the beings. After this strange incident occurred, the crew went on to stay in the vessel for a record-breaking 237 days. Across the Atlantic in America, the US space program brought its own spat of curious incidents. In 1966, two bright red glowing objects captured the attention of astronauts Young and Collins as they circled the Earth. At the time, they had ventured further into space than any other human. Suddenly, both astronauts were amazed to find they were no longer alone. Two bright red glowing objects now occupied the same orbital path. The astronauts immediately informed Mission Control, who in turn requested further information. In their words, if you can get a bearing, maybe we can track them down. Just at that particular moment, astronaut Young radios back. They just disappeared. The official verdict attributed the sighting to space junk discarded from an unmanned Saturn rocket earlier that month. A simple explanation, but one that fails to explain the erratic movements of the objects as they left orbit and disappeared so easily. The astronauts were adamant these were not stars, and it's difficult to image what man-made device of that time could emit a glowing red light so far out there in space. So that was the Black Knight satellite and other strange encounters that have occurred in space. I'd love to know your thoughts on this subject, so don't forget to drop a comment. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more countdown videos. In recent years, the world has become a much smaller place, with everything being mapped out and no location hidden from satellites. With that being said, there are still some things we don't understand. In this video, we count down five unsolved mysteries. The Boiling River of the Amazon. This scalding hot river was thought to be a myth, until one geoscientist made it his quest to study the mystical waters. Hidden in the dense jungle of the Peruvian Amazon is a rolling river. The steaming turquoise waters that can reach up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit are guarded by ivory-colored stones, and guarded by 60-foot walls of lush forest and vegetation. Locals believe that the river was sacred and that the hot waters held healing powers, and shamans incorporated it into medicines. The water temperature ranges from 120 degrees up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit and it reaches 16 feet deep in some places. The mud of the riverbank is too hot to walk on, and if you did, your skin would be covered in third-degree burns in less than a second. Small unfortunate animals like frogs can be found broiled in the water. There is no confirmation regarding how the phenomenon came to be, but it's been suggested a drilling company accidentally ruptured a geothermal system, releasing gases from inside the earth into the river. Chimpanzees represent our closest living relative, sharing 98% of our genetic DNA. They live in vast social communities consisting of up to 50 individuals and comprising of several family groups. They have strict hierarchies, with one dominant alpha male. Chimps are one of few animals that are known to make and use tools. They have been observed stripping the leaves off a twig and then dipping it into a termite nest to catch the insects and chewing the end of a stick to make it more water absorbent so it can be used as a dipping stick. Kevin Hunt, director of the Human Origins and Primate Evolution Lab in Indiana University, said the following. If you shave a chimpanzee and took a photo of its body from neck to the waist, at first glance you wouldn't really notice that it isn't human. The two species musculature is extremely similar, 
but somehow pound for pound chimps are between two to four times stronger than humans. It's unclear why we're so much wimpier than our closest hominid relatives. Perhaps our muscle attachment points differ, or our muscle fibers could be less dense. Either way, the result is slightly humiliating. Once in an African forest, Hunt watched an 80 pound female chimp snap branches off an ironwood tree with her fingertips. It took Hunt two hands and all the strength he could muster to snap an equally thick branch. There's at least two Jersey Devils, the variety found in folklore dating between 1735 to 1909, and the Jersey Devil of modern sightings. The Jersey Devil of folklore has hoofs, a snake tail, bat wings, and a head that looks something like a horse. Altogether, it roughly resembles a kangaroo-like dragon. In fact, it was described as a dragon by many of the early witnesses. The Jersey Devil of modern sightings is a bunch of different things. The name has been applied to cryptids that more or less resemble the original Jersey Devil, but it's also applied to nearly every New Jersey cryptid imaginable, such as hairy humanoids that resemble Bigfoot, mystery birds and even eastern cougars. One Jersey Devil sighting described a hairy humanoid with a deer's head and glowing red eyes. In 1934 near South Pittsburgh, Tennessee, a phantom kangaroo or kangaroo-like beast was reported by several witnesses over a five-day period. The mysterious beast was said to have been very aggressive. Kangaroos are typically unaggressive and vegetarian. A witness described the animal as looking like a kangaroo running and leaping across a field. A search party followed the animal's tracks to a mountainside cave where they stopped. During the week of January the 16th, 1909, newspapers of the time published hundreds of claim encounters with the Jersey Devil from all over the state. Among alleged encounters publicized that week were claims the creature attacked a trolley car in Haddon Heights and a social club in Camden. Police in Camden and Bristol, Pennsylvania supposedly fired on the creature to no effect. Other reports initially concerned unidentified footprints in the snow, but soon sightings of the creature resembling the Jersey Devil were being reported throughout South Jersey and as far away as Delaware and Western Maryland. On January the 19th, 1909, Mr. and Mrs. Evans were awakened in the early morning by the sound of a large animal on the roof of their shed. They described it as about three and a half feet high, with a face like a collie and a head like a horse. It had a long neck, wings about two feet long, and its back legs were like those of a crane, and it had horse's hooves. It walked on its back legs and held up two short front legs with paws on them. One afternoon of that same week, a Mrs. White was taking clothes off her line when she noticed a strange creature huddled in the corner of her garden. She screamed and fainted, and her husband rushed out the back door to find his wife on the ground and the creature close by. She chased the monster and it leapt over the fence and vanished. Then as suddenly as it had come, the creature and sightings had vanished. The creature did not return until 1927. A cab driver was changing a tire one night, he had just finished when his car began shaking violently. He looked up to see a gigantic winged creature pounding on the roof of his car. The driver, leaving his jack and flat tire behind, jumped into the car and quickly drove away. He reported the encounter to the police. In August 1930, berry pickers at Leeds Point and Maze Landing reported seeing the creature, crashing through the fields and devouring blueberries and cranberries. It was reported again two weeks later to the north and then disappeared again. Today, there's only a few isolated sightings of the creature. It seems as though the paved roads, electric lights, and modern conventions that have come to the region over the course of two and a half centuries have driven the monster so far into hiding that it's vanished altogether. The lack of proof of the monster in modern times leads many to believe the creature was nothing more than a creation of New Jersey folklore. But how does one explain the witness accounts from reliable people like businessmen, police officers, and even public officials? Remy van Leerd was a Belgian pilot who became well known for his heroic exploits during World War II. Among other feats, he escaped from a German prisoner of war camp and made it safely to Britain, where he became an ace in the Royal Air Force, but his famous monster sighting came years later. According to van Leerd, he was flying over the jungle in a helicopter when he spotted a giant snake. It was very green and had a white belly, which he estimated was over 50 feet in length. 
In his account, the serpent reared up as though it wanted to attack the helicopter. He even managed to snap a picture of the beast, which is now well known in cryptozoological circles. Unfortunately, the picture doesn't provide anything to indicate the scale, so it can't be used as proof that the snake was really that enormous. Still, he insisted that the monster was a true giant, and could have easily have eaten up a man if it wanted to. One very exciting area of cryptozoology is that of apparent dinosaurs who have somehow survived up to the present day. The thought of having real dinosaurs still prowling the wild places of the world, as they did millions of years ago, is exciting. Such mysterious creatures can be found in many reports from the deepest, darkest jungles of Africa to the rainforests of South America. Yet you don't necessarily have to go so far away to such isolated spots to find accounts of supposedly being dinosaurs in the modern age. In the southwestern United States, there have long been reports of dinosaurs roaming about, apparently very much alive and well. Tales of dinosaurs in the American Southwest go back to the frontier Wild West days of cowboys and Indians. Among some of the most talked about and famous of the dinosaurs of the West are the various large pterodactyl type creatures, said to have been sighted throughout the 1800s and beyond, and which were already known to the native peoples of the region as Thunderbirds. The story of this photo's existence was corroborated by writer H.M. Cramner in a 1963 article in Fate magazine and renowned cryptozoologist Ivan Sanderson claimed that he actually owned a photocopy of the photo. From there, the legend of the now notorious Thunderbird photo really took off. People began to come out of the woodwork swearing they'd seen the photo on TV, in books or in magazines, but in every case, no actual copy could ever be tracked down. The question of the elusive photo's existence became a popular topic within the realm of cryptozoology, inciting heated debate and speculation. In-depth investigations into the claims of the photo being printed in the tombstone epitaph were carried out, yet looking back deeply into the newspaper's archives showed that no such picture was ever published, and there had been no follow-up article. Others searched all editions of various books in which people had sworn they'd seen the photo, but it turned out that no such photo had ever been published in any of them. Some people have sworn that the picture was most certainly in a particular book, only to find that the photo was gone when they looked there. Over the years, photos have occasionally been brought forward and claimed to be the supposed lost Thunderbird photo, but none of them seem to be exactly what was described in the original or what people insisted they remember seeing. Whether the photo really existed or not, there were certainly a lot of reports of flying pterodactyl-like creatures during the era. So that was 5 Unsolved Mysteries. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more countdown videos. With its centuries of history and array of colourful characters, it's not surprising that the USA is home to many haunted places. In this video, we count down 5 mysterious and haunted places in the USA. When most people think of San Diego, they picture beaches, beautiful weather and cultural attractions. But for those who have an affinity for the paranormal San Diego Beacons investigation, with its rich and dark past, haunted spots, spiritual encounters and inexplicable events. The most haunted of all the San Diego places is the Whaley House. While the story of the Whaley House's origins may seem as simple and innocent as a family's history, the truth is many believe this house was destined to be haunted before it is even built. The property was the site of one of the town's most famous public executions, that of the hanging of the infamous thief Yankee Jim Robinson. But Thomas Whaley was not daunted by this fact, and in 1855 purchased the land and began construction of what would be his family home. The house was a beautiful example of Greek Revival architecture. Thomas, his wife Anna and their three children moved into the house in 1857, and within a few months opened a general store inside the residence. 
It wasn't long after the Whaley family moved into the home that sadness and despair were thrust upon them. First, their young son Thomas, who was only 18 months old, died of scarlet fever inside the house. Then a few months later, a fire raged within the home, destroying the general store. Soon after, Thomas decided to move the family to San Francisco. Several years later, in 1868, the Whaley family, which now included Thomas, his wife, and their five children, returned to the home. Once the family returned, the Whaley house was again bustling with activity. It became the headquarters for the city courthouse, a general store and more. But in 1870, local merchants began to move to the newly established new town, abandoning old town and leaving it eerily quiet. Thomas Whaley was not ready to give up and continue to live in his home. In 1871, when Thomas was away on a business trip, a group of armed men held Anna Whaley at gunpoint as they seized the courthouse records from the house. This, many say, was the turning point for the family and the house. Over the years, many descendants of the Whaley family lived and died in the house, including Thomas, Anna and their children Lillian, Thomas, Violet and Francis. During its restoration period, which took place over several different times throughout the home's history, Workers and visitors began to notice strange and mysterious sounds and encounters. The first and most well-known ghost that lingered within the house and on the grounds was that of Yankee Jim Robinson, as he had died right on the spot where the home was built. The infamous criminal made eerie noises, loud footsteps and left disembodied footprints, continually scaring weighty family members throughout their lifetimes. An island icon, Captain Tony's saloon has an intriguing past, one that includes murder, mystery, and even a bit of mayhem. Before becoming a popular watering hole, the building served as a few different roles. It was an ice house, the city morgue, a wireless telegraph station, and a cigar factory. It was also the original home of the famous Sloppy Joe's Bar. It was 1865 when a hurricane hit the Florida Keys and water came crashing through the city, smashing nearly everything in its wake. The city morgue that would later become Captain Tony's was no exception to the devastation. The many corpses that were awaiting burial or autopsy were washed away except for one. History tells us that the one body recovered was lying in front of the building, and was later buried beneath the building surrounded by holy water and enclosed by a wall where the pool room now resides. During the building's construction, while removing old flooring workers discovered the skeletal remains of several people, and a grave marker of a woman named Elvira. It's believed that these may very well be some of the missing bodies that were lost after the hurricane. Many who visited this legendary bar have experienced some sort of inexplicable encounter. Often the events surround the ladies' restroom where people have reported various mysterious encounters. One woman reported that she tried to go into the first store but it was locked. When she went into the second store, she noticed no one was in the first. Before leaving the bar later that evening, she went in only to find the store still locked and before she knew what was happening, the outside door to the restroom opened and closed, although no one could be seen. When she went into the back store, she heard the door of the first store unlock and slam. Frightened, she jumped up to see what was happening and still no one was in sight, and the first door was again locked. The bar's owner, who considers himself to be a skeptic, reports that he too had several experiences that were not just spooky but terrifying. One night around 4am, Joe heard a voice calling out to him. He got up from his desk to investigate but saw no one was there. He walked to the back of the bar and noticed the doors were wide open, even though he locked them hours before. Unable to explain the voice he heard, he simply brushed it off, until a few years later when the same voice called out to him again. This time the voice said, don't leave. Joe ran to check the back doors and this time they were locked. He found nothing out of the ordinary throughout the bar so he went home. Hours later, around 6am, Joe got a call from the police saying they found the body of a young teenage girl in front of the bar. It seems she tried to call her mother just before she passed away. Her mother called the police and they later found her body in front of Captain Tony's. Joe believes the voice was telling him to stay, and that he might have been able to save the girl's life. Only that spirit knows for sure. Many people who've been to Hummel Park in Nebraska disagree on the specifics of the park's history, but one thing that most people can agree on is that there's a creepy vibe there. 
a place called Devil's Den is where some people have come to perform rituals. Although the tales of the park being built on a Native American burial ground, and infested with evil spirits have yet to be proven, the altars with satanic scrawlings are very real and can be seen by visitors. Legend has it that if you count the steps going up and down the numbers will never match up, there will always be more stairs going up than coming down, or vice versa depending on who you ask. It's said that if you ever do arrive at the same number, your death is imminent. One legend even says that if you count the steps while descending, and happen to count the correct numbers the devil will appear to grant you anything you ask for, as long as you're willing to give your soul in exchange. Listed on the National Register of Historic Places, the old jail was built by Henry Flagger in 1891 and served the county until 1953. During this era it wasn't uncommon for the warden and his family to live inside the jail, adjacent to the prisoners. So Sheriff Joe Perry and his family were also residents within the building. They would live alongside around 60 prisoners. Visitors to the old jail have a chance to walk through the men and women's cells, see actual weapons that were used in crimes and tour through the execution gallows. The experience is often a frightening one, especially for those who are easily caught off guard by unexpected events. Many have died and suffered with diseases within these walls, and it's believed their spirits are still lingering. The 6 foot 8 300 pound sheriff has been seen and heard. Strange smells, heavy footprints, disembodied moanings, laughing, jangling chains and even the sounds of dogs barking have all been reported. The old jail is so abundant with supernatural activity that it's been investigated by various paranormal professionals, and because of their findings it's deemed a certified haunted building, and is listed in the National Directory of Haunted Places. The most famous ghost of the harbour is the Lady in Black at Fort Warren, seven miles out to sea on George's Island. Legend has it that in 1862, Mrs. Lainey came to Fort from South Carolina to rescue her husband, a Confederate soldier who was being held prisoner there. She snuck and lied her way into the prison and managed to rescue her husband and others in prison there. Unfortunately for Miss Lanier, they were apprehended. She fired at the nearest guard but the weapon backfired. A piece of shrapnel from the explosion lodged itself into her husband's head, and therefore she had accidentally killed her own husband in an effort to rescue him. She was then tried and hung in a black robe as a traitor on George's Island on February 2nd, 1862. It's in this black robe that she is still seen to this day in various ways around Fort Warren and George's Island as a whole. Boston Harbor's Long Island is home to one of the most tragic Boston ghost stories. At the close of the American Revolution, the British still had several ships lagging in Boston Harbor. On board of one of these ships were William and Mary Burton. The newlyweds like so many others were fleeing the chaos of this besieged city and looking forward to spending their lives together across the Atlantic. As their ship attempted to sail out of Boston Harbor, a cannonball from the Long Island Battery hit Mary in the back of the head. Unbelievably she was not killed instantly, but lingered on for several days in excruciating pain before succumbing to a massive head trauma. As she laid there, Mary pleaded with her husband not to bury her at sea. She was never fond of the sea and could not bear to have her earthly remains consigned to a watery grave. Eventually, Mary died of her injuries and William was permitted to venture to Long Island to bury his love. Once ashore, he sewed her body into a soft red blanket that Mary had brought for the long journey home. He then laid her to rest in the sandy dunes. He fashioned a headstone out of a piece of driftwood and he carved her name into it and swore that he would return to Boston and give her a proper marker. He never returned. So that was 5 Haunted Places in the USA. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more countdown videos.